today because of a bruised hip, although Marcus says he will give it a try. But the Raider defense will be ready with 17 sacks. They lead the league of that department. And they'll be tested by that huge Washington offensive line that has provided Joe Bison with excellent protection. Bison threw for three touchdowns last week. The combination of Bison, along with Super Bowl MVP John Riggins, along with the Smurfs and the Hogs, looking to deal the Raiders their first loss of the 1983 season. From RFK Stadium, it's the Los Angeles Raiders and the Washington Redskins. And today's game is broken half against Denver last week, but Marcus says he's all right, and we'll give it a shot today. Marcus may be all right. He hasn't been hit yet, but even though he won't make it, the Raiders do have depth. Greg Pruitt, who has been a great back, would be his replacement with Frankie Hawkins, and we know Kenny King has been doing a fine job for several years. And this is Chris Barr getting set to kick off to the Washington Redskins. Raiders have won 13 of the last 15. Redskins, 18 of their last 20. Redskins come in at 3-1. and one. After losing to Dallas in the come-from-behind Cowboy effort, won their last three. And the Raiders for the record of 4-0. and oh. And this is all-pro Mike Nelm. Good coverage by the Raiders. Backing up Helms inside the 20. Back up linebacker Darrell Byrd leading the assault. So here are the Washington Redskins for the offense following the 16-yard return <laughs> by Helms. And, of course, they go with the uh, single back offense. John Riggins, most valuable player last year's Super Bowl. That was a lot of talent in the backfield, but very few people. Yes. And this is the reason. And the offense. Offensive line, the key matchup, Joe Jacoby going against number 77, Lyle Alzado. And it goes right to Riggins. And a first down, picked up by Riggins. Bob Nelson making the stop. So John Riggins testing that Raider defense. And these are basically the people you're going to see shuffled around by the Raiders. Well, these six people interchange so frequently, uh, Marv, it would be uh, unfair and inaccurate to state it any other way than six across. And the outstanding core of linebackers, Riggins picked up 12, first out of the 31, and again it's Riggins. And he is gang tackled after the short pickup. Matt Miller, number 55. Inside linebacker on the left. Leading the charge, and in the secondary, John, you talked earlier about the fact that you feel the Redskins should go at the Raider strength in the person of number 30. Well, the left cornerback is Ted Watts, obviously. He's number 20. They had Rod Martin up, who's a great linebacker, but I don't think he can play two positions at once yet. He may be can, <laughs> but Watts will be tested, I think, for the first time today, as will Lester Hayes. It is Watts and Hayes at the corners. Mike Davis and Van McElroy are the deep men. And again, Riggins looking to pick his way out across the 35 and Rod Martin right there. This is what the Raiders would love to do. Get them a third and five, third and six. And they are, uh, listen, the Raiders are such good pass rushers, and I think you're going to have an opportunity to see it for the first time, that they really defy the short passing game, even though it only takes a couple seconds to get off. Those fellas get back in that backfield as fast as anybody I've seen in several years. And we saw Rickon set to the sideline. Nick Chiaquinto and Joe Washington in on the passing down for Joe Feisman. And Feisman slips. Looks to be a mix-up. <laughs> Howie Long on the uh, cover-up. Well, that's embarrassing. I know what Joe did is probably catch his foot on the center. Now, I yep, there it is. You see the center caught. That's about the only way a quarterback ever falls down coming back out of there. But it, that happens a lot more often than you'd like to see. Jeff Bostic got his foot right in the way. Embarrassing a bit. And here's Jeff Hayes back at his 15-yard line. Greg Pruitt back for the punt. Pruitt averaging nine and a half yards per punt return. High snap. And Pruitt at the 32. Penalty marker down. Darrell Bird 
it's one thing to hit somebody and not get them below the waist as the rules prescribe and it's very difficult sometimes to get someone off his feet but you can't hit them in the back and instead of having excellent field position now they're going to have very mediocre field position as Pat Haggerty and his boys sit there and discuss the penalty Otis Wamsley on the coverage off the 39 yard punt and the short return and here's Pat Haggerty Illegal hands, pushing the back above the waist. So the Raiders being set back. And here's how the Raiders look offensively. Marcus Allen, who will give it a shot, despite the bruised tip, along with Kenny King. Watch him very closely early, because uh, I've seen a lot of fellas play with, with bruises, but if that thing is, is still pretty sore. It's awful tough for a running back. I think an offensive lineman might make a go of it, a defensive player, but a running back, I just don't see it. Raiders first down at their 23-yard line. Cliff Branch, who caught two touchdown passes last week. Top of your screen. Malcolm Barnwell on the other side. Marcus is not in there. And a flag down as Plunkett goes deep for Branch. Dean on the coverage, but a penalty marker down as Branch beat the secondary downfield. Did he beat the secondary? That ball looked like it was overthrown by about three yards. He ran right under it. And I think the Raiders are guilty of some infraction. Head coach Tom Flores, who has had the Raider penalty number down this season, they have not picked up the penalties the way they have in the past. Illegal motion, offense, number 37, first down. Well, the uh, motion penalty. It's important to note, too, that Marcus Allen is not in the lineup. They've got Frank Hawkins, who is an outstanding player and has become better in his third year out of the Nevada Reno. He's starting and has played a lot this year. And the penalty called out Hawkins, so Hawkins and King in the backfield, first down and 15. Overthrowing Branch. Branch covered by the right quarterback, Vernon Dean. Dean came up with an interception last week against Seattle, leading to a Washington TD. Now he's had a rough time, not having the season he had last year coming well, off it from what happened a year. He's an over player. And what, is, what an over player is is a man. They saw him after one time around. They know Vernon Dean likes to play to the outside. You cannot throw a ball to the outside on Vernon Dean very easily. You notice Branch right then tried to beat him on a post, then beat him on a turn in. Both times he was open, Jim overthrew that one. Second down, 15. That is picked off. with his first intercept of the season. Well, Jimmy's trying to look look to the other side, but never really does. He gives the play away a bit. He's trying to get the ball to Malcolm uh, Barnwell, and Curtis Jordan is standing right in between him and the receiver. This was a simple catch the ball, and we got an interception. Seventh year out of Texas Tech, spent five years with Tampa Bay, a starter with the Bucks, starting a strong safety for the skin. And he has presented Washington with a first down at the 11-yard line, off the interception. He got a gimme. Long count. Here's Griffin. Van McElroy finally hauling Riggins down. Listen, McElroy made a fine play, but Ted Hendricks made the kind of play he's been making for years. It just shows how strong Riggins is. Hendricks was sitting in a position to make that arm grab of his where he generally takes the back, throws him around a while, and pitches him back to the quarterback. This time he gets one hand, Riggins gets loose, and carries McElroy for four yards. So second down and six. Remember, the Redskins have been a quick starter. They've been a very good first quarter club. But the Raiders have faced this kind of adversity many times this year. But this is Riggins 
hammering down near the goal line again. McElroy this time with help from Millen on the tackle. Marv, you talked about adversity, and this is the their backs are and they at, against the wall. They are being tested really for the for the first time in that this is a third down and one. This play will determine whether or not they keep their streak alive. They have not allowed a touchdown while the game was in balance in the previous four games they've played. Of course, they haven't played against Riggins either. <laughs> Redskins leading the NFL. defense to stop the ball carrier but not to stop John Riggins they get him trapped a full yard Ted Watts makes perfect contact a yard and a half from the goal line a half a yard from the first down line instead Riggins picks up that extra yard with a with a final surge put six points on the board for the Redskins the first time anybody's made a rushing touchdown against the Raiders all year and Mark Mosley adds the extra point so it took a minute and 27. Four plays, 11 yards. Following the interception by Curtis Jordan. And the Redskins lead it. 7 nothing. So Jim McMahon at quarterback. Not Vince Evans. 52 yards to Matt Suey. The next play, Suey took it in just like that. 7 nothing Bears. All right, now back to Marvin John. Landing back at RFK Stadium in Washington, John Riggins has given the Redskins a 7-0 lead. Riggins off to a fast start. In fact, first play from scrimmage, he reeled off 12 yards. The kickoff by Jeff Hayes. Here's Greg Pruitt. Out to the 15. Beautiful hurtling moves by Pruitt to reach out near the 30. Anthony Washington on the tackle as we take another look at the move of John Riggins. Well, they've got two tight ends. Nobody can overplay either side. They know they're going to hand it to Riggins. They don't know which way he's going to go, but the cornerbacks do not exactly wait for him to get out into their area. He does punish cornerbacks. Nice return on the kickoff by Pruitt, 26 yards. The Raiders stay with the backfield of Kenny King and Frank Hawkins, so Marcus Allen setting it out right now. This is King. Out to the 33-yard line. Darrell Green, the left quarterback, number 28, involved along with Neil Okowitz, middle linebacker. And checking out the Redskins defensively, Liebenstein, Buck, Grant, and Manley up front. Here are the linebackers, Rick Mallott having a solid season. And in the secondary, the rookie from Texas A&I, number one draft pick, Darrell Green, along with Jordan Murphy and Dean. Frank Hawkins to the 35, picked up two. It'll be a third down and five. Curtis Jordan there for the stop. We saw the opening lineup, and one man who not only is the is the the steadying influence in the middle of the line, but also a great defensive tackle. Number 65, Dave Butt. He's good enough so that in an, in an exchange draft, the National Football League awarded two firsts and a second, a second draft choice to St. Louis when he came over as a free agent in 74. He's been playing great football for the last six years. Yeah, he's coming off his best season at the NFL. Look it in trouble. Dexter Madley, number 72 with the sack, but a flag thrown. <laughs> and Dexter, who is always talkative, not in a friendly mood. Well, he, he's the man that mentioned, you know, against the Raiders, what you have to do is you have to do your playing while the ball is in play, not afterwards, because the Raiders will intimidate. Well, he got caught here, and I think there's going to be a some kind of a five-yard penalty for face mask. And he says he didn't, but it's clear to see he did. It wasn't intentional, but it was on the on the rim. Number 72, defense, still third down. 
So the crowd reacting to the face mask called on Dexter Manley. Yes, Dexter said you have to watch out for the Raiders for late hits and sarcastic conversation. Yeah, I know a lot of people have said it. I don't, I've never found them that way. Third out and four. And Puckett gets it away. A beautiful interception. Ken Coffey, the nickel back, picking off the pass intended for Todd Christensen. There is another flag on the field, however, Marvin. Pat Haggerty, the, the referee, is trying to get everyone to uh, not walk off the field, so it could be another penalty against the uh, Redskins. Personal foul, number 69, on the return. Oh, on the return. That's after the interception. Harry Brooks. There's Brooks, 69, sixth year out of Southern. So that was after... The ball was picked off by Ken Coffey, who came up with a second interception of the season. And Plunkett has been picked off twice in this first quarter, the first time by Jordan, which led to the touchdown. So what will what will happen is they will they will mark 15 yards off from the spot he returned the ball. Chicago in front of Denver, 7-0 in the first quarter as we check the scoreboard. And New England leading San Francisco, 6-0 in the mm. first. Redskins first down, back at their 33. Bison out of the wall. Nice five-line pattern with Tommy Brown for the first down. Lester Hayes on the coverage, so the Redskins go right at Hayes. And the way they did it is the impressive thing. This is the way they played it played Miami in the Super Bowl as we see a, a flag thrown but it looks like a late face mask call again not I don't think it'll affect the play I think it but who knows yep seems to be going back to the line of scrimmage we better wait John we have covered the Raiders twice earlier this season and we discussed the personality of the various uh, referees who have headed up the officiating team as we Listen to the call by Pat Haggerty. Offensive pass interference number 87. First down. Offensive pass interference on Charlie Brown, so they move it right back. How would you break down the officiating of Pat Haggerty? Very consistent and effective, and he will be in control of the ball game, and you'll notice that by the way he's taking charge early. He won't take charge in the same manner as a Ben Bryson. He doesn't tell him to get off the field and mind your own business, but he, he does his job. It is a first down and 20. Back at the 23. Bryson can't find anyone. Howie Long and Lyle Alzado bring him down. You know, you'd, you'd say, Joe, why don't you throw the ball? I mean, anywhere you throw it has to be better than taking the punishment of a hit. But as we take a look at the coverage, here's the wide shot. You see Joe going back. Now take a look to the left of your screen. He's trying to throw a screen pass. But Rod Martin is standing right in the middle of the screen, so he can't throw the ball. He can't throw the ball away because if you look, all of his receivers are perfectly covered. If he throws in the middle, it's drowning the ball. So he does about the only thing left. And he now has a second down and 32 back at the 11. Penalty marker thrown as the ball was battered down. Looks to be Alzado, and there's Howie Long in an animated discussion. There we go again. Mark May, the Redskin right guard, and the left defensive end, Howie Long, who said before the game, you know, we're not very welcome when we uh, travel <laughs> talking about uh, the Raider ball club. Howie said, would you want your daughter to marry a Raider? <laughs> I don't know how we may be taking a, taking it a step uh, further. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, <laughs> I, I've been around them for so long that I know all that stuff is baloney. But a lot of people buy it. And uh, they seem to, they seem to uh, have an effect on their opponents on Sunday. And so they stay with it. But right now... Holding 74, decline. They're playing just the way they've been playing all year. As we look at Charlie Sumner who is the defensive coordinator. And I guess, Marv, if you were to, to typify certain coaches, 
some coaches can can get jobs, other can others can do jobs. And I think if there's one guy that epitomizes that phrase, it would be Charlie Sumner. He's the coordinator. He was the guy who started the safety blitz with the Chicago Bears as a player. And, uh, you know, he even worked for the Raiders once, went to New England, as you well know, and stated to me earlier, and has come back. That's how much Al Davis respects his ability. That's most unusual, where a guy leaves the Raiders and uh, not on the best of terms. <laughs> and, uh, he is now. They want him back. All right, that hole called on George Stark. Pulled out and very long. Joe Washington out near the 15, but it will be punt formation for the Redskins. Otis McKinney on the stop of Washington. Redskins lead at 7 0. They've intercepted Jim Plunkett twice, one leading to a touchdown. Marv Albert with John Brody. Capacity crowd here at RFK Stadium with seven and a half remaining in the first quarter. And this is Jeff Hayes, second season out of North Carolina. How many times do you see a team going to punt formation after picking off a ball at midfield from their own end zone? And that's Hayes back at the goal line. Greg Pruitt calling for the fair catch and uh, much extracurricular activity. Look out. You know, they talk about, about the Raiders, but that time, Charles Mann, number 71, a rookie, he got in the act, decided, hey, if they want to play that way, let me have a go at it. This is my style. He was one of the few, one of the few rookies on the team. They've only got three. And it was Greg Williams. Back up defensive back and ball for the Redskins. 41-yard punt by Jeff Hayes. And the action is just heating up. From Kay in Washington before the game, we were just in, to get control of the game. And I think right now it'll start settling down. First out at the 43-yard line. Frank Hawkins met head-on Dave Butts, number 65 in his 11th season. Out of Purdue was right there. Dave Butts has been there a lot in the last few years. They play there, one of the few teams to play that standard 4-3 defense. Butts gets head on with the guard. Not too many guards can handle him one-on-one. -on -one. That time he wins the battle, picks up the back before he gets started. Loss of four, second and 14. At the 39. Six and a half left, first quarter. Redskins seven. And the Raiders nothing. Plunkett looking, can't find anyone, but a good game uh -oh. for Jim Plunkett. Getting out to midfield, Daryl Green, submarine to. Art was set for another update from our studios back in New York, so let's go to NFL 83. Okay, thank you, Marv. In Cincinnati, here come the Colts again. Another Arizona State rookie. This one, Alvin Moore takes it in, nine yards. It's seven to three, Colts. Back to you, Marv. Thank you, Len. 12-yard gain for Plunkett. Third down and two. You could tell Plunkett's a little hot. He's tried to get a few more yards than he generally does. He's trying to make up for a few early errors. Kenny King on the fumble. And let's see. It is Washington on the recovery. Daryl Green, the rookie, number 28. Recovering, so the Redskins take over. What happened there is something that hasn't happened. The other side of the coin is 636 running plays. Whether it'll happen or not today, we don't know, but that's some stat. Oh, Green, the rookie from Texas A&I, fits right into the Redskins' smirk image at 5'8", 170 <laughs> pounds, coming up with the third turnover. And it has cost the Raiders here in the first quarter. John Riggins with another power move. Matt Millen there to make the stop. You know, they talk so much about, about money, and then they talk about prestige. I think more than anything, what you're seeing right now is the pride that both these groups respectively have for their own group. Uh, the defensive line and linebackers for the Raiders, I think, are regarded right now as the team that's playing best in the NFL. Offensively, you see the same thing for Washington, and they're just having a nice, good go with one another. And 
And here's Rickon tapping a go to the 45-yard line. Three-yard advance. And this will establish a third down and five. Martin and Nelson combining on the stop. Two years ago, there were many who thought that Riggins was finishing out his career as a as a backup player, turned it around last year, put together a record three straight 100-yard playoff game, and then set uh, the Super Bowl record with 166 <laughs> yards. The people that thought he was, his days were gone, uh, didn't know an awful lot about the man. Of course, he wasn't satisfied in terms of his contract at the time also. That was taken care of right after the Super Bowl. Here's third down and five. Intended for number 89, Alvin Garrett. But the first, the first time I've seen it in a third down situation, somebody finally found a way to pick on Lester Hayes. We mentioned at the outset he's one-on-one -on -one with Alvin Garrett, whoever the wide receiver is. This time he's got number 89 all over the field. Garrett in motion, comes down, gives himself some room to the outside, does everything perfectly but catch the ball. There are certain passes you can be excused for dropping, but third down possession passes, that isn't a good deal. And here's Greg Pruitt as a result awaiting the punt from Jeff Hayes. Oh my. We'll see who they call it on because if it's against the Raiders, it's the first down. <laughs> They've got a lot of players that are very willing to make the call. Encroachment, defense number 54. And Tom Flory does not like it. Darrell Bird, the linebacker, calls for the penalty. And that's a very dumb play. The reason it's a dumb play is I don't care whether they encroach or they pull you off, whatever they do, it's like giving them a turnover. That's as important as an interception. And the same thing was true with Alvin Garrett's drop. Those are ball control uh, errors, and, and it's not okay to make them, and Flores is not going to let him forget it. Darrell Bird is a rookie from Illinois. The discussion continues. The Washington offensive unit moving back on as the first down is indicated. The only way that one would have been short is if the, the stripes are wrong. <laughs> All right, uh, Flory is looking to walk it off. So Jacoby, Grim, Bostic, May, Stark back on. Four minutes, four seconds remaining. In the first quarter, Redskins seven, and the Raiders nothing. Riggins looked like the reverse was being set up, and then Riggins bumped out at the 36. Strong safety, Mike Davis, outside linebacker, Rod Martin, on the bump. Let's get back to New York to NFL 83. Marv, moments ago in Chicago, Jim McMahon throwing for the Bears. He finds Willie Galt, the sprinter, fifth touchdown of the year already. Chicago leads it 14-0. Back to Washington. All right, lad, and quarterback Jim McMahon was in the doghouse. They were talking about making some changes. Sometimes that has an effect one way or another. With McMahon, it seemed to work in the right direction. Washington second out and six. At the Raider, 36. And a timeout being called by the Redskins. Well, they'll talk it over with Joe Gibbs. Just under four minutes remaining. First quarter. And Washington, by virtue of three turnovers by the Raiders, leading at 7 zip. Get head coach Joe Gibbs has just inserted number 81, Art Monk, into the ballgame. First time that Art has seen action this season. He's been on injured reserve. John Riggins near the first down marker. Tackled by Rod Martin. Lyle Alzado, Alzado also involved. Art Monk making it back from a knee injury, seeing his first action. And I do want to get back to him in just a second, Marv. As you see, this looks like a play that the Raiders have been stopping for no gain all year long. It picked up five yards, and it shows you the strength of the offensive line for the Redskins. We're looking at a few scores. Denver still is not scoring in the first half. 
Chicago's got a 12 zip lead. And it's a third down and one. And here's Rickett. And he has picked it up. Depending on the spot. <laughs> All right, Nelson. Got it. Nelson and Martin. Combining on the tackle. And we'll have to wait until they uh, unravel. Looks like from the angle up here, yes, it, it, it is. That's what's called 10 yards and three plays. That's the way their offense likes to be able to work. Give the ball to Reagans three times, let him pick up a first down. Talking about Art Monk, he adds a new dimension to them, Marvin. I know that's about what you were to, uh, alluding to, but he's bigger. He can catch the ball inside better, and he's got great speed to get deep. And Art uh, missed the Super Bowl last year because of an injury, and many folks thought no way the Skins could do anything. This is the tight end, Rick Walker. So Walker, with his first perception of the day, and picks up a first down. Van McElroy and Ted Hedricks combine on the tackle. You may see Joe Theismann throw the ball outside all day long. It's the only place that it's real that there is a vulnerability as far as the Raider defense is concerned. They try to get this time it was tied in uh, Rick Walker on Mike Davis. They run people in motion. They do different things to get in one on one situation. They got a good matchup and they took advantage of it. Rick Walker had a terrific game against the Raiders the last time these clubs met a couple of years back. Five receptions, 55 yards. First down, 13 yard line, and here's Rickon. Picked up three. Millen and Reese stack him up. And you can hear the impact of Rickon making contact with uh, the. That's because the defense. That's because there was a, a slight bit of resistance from number 55, Matt Millen. Those two will make contact with one another. If Seattle's got Cleveland three to nothing, the Niners scored to go out ahead of New England. Look at Cincinnati having a little trouble with Baltimore, but hanging on. And Green Bay's making a comeback. John Riggins now 46 yards, 12 carries. We're still first quarter with two minutes remaining. Play action. And the Raiders did not go for it. A one-handed sack by Howie Long. You think those fellas aren't strong? Now, Joe Theismann weighs almost 200 pounds, and although he looks like a midget, he's six foot tall. At least it says that in the program. And to be able to take a man like that with one hand and absolutely stuff him, that's what the official was calling here. He had no chance to get away from Long, even though he only had him by one arm. Look at this. Boop. Thank you very much. And now it's their first third and 15. And the Raiders with three sacks to 27 yards, setting up a third down, 16 back at the 19. Again, the play action, and Feisman fires. Art Monk, the intended receiver, covered by James Davis. Boy, those cornerbacks are going to get their workout today, and I think we're going to see a good illustration as to why. Joe Jacoby, who was a free agent, third-year player, is playing against a man that's had a, a smorgasbord playing defense, Lyle Alzado. That time, Alzado did not even get close. He goes to the outside, Jacoby's standing up, he's on him, watch this. Now as he gets toward the quarterback, he just gives him a nice little push, and it is no contest. That's a quarterback's dream. A smorgasbord, huh? Yeah, that means you stick around and you, you pick out the one you like. And Mark Mosley was off the mark. Mark Mosley attempting from 31 yards away, not able to hit. Well, they've had the ball an awful lot in this first quarter of play. We've got 119 to go in the first quarter, and I'll bet you that the, the Redskins have had it for 10 minutes of that time. They've only got seven points to show for it. They have an opportunity to make more than that. That might be long in the, in the outcome. The announcement furnished as a public service by the National Football League. That's not bad. That's not a bad stat. You're kicking conversion. Well, Mark Mosley have a sensational year last season. This year he is now 8 for 11. That's an awfully high percentage, and I can see why it's disappointed because that was a chip shot for him. So the Raiders off the play action. There's Plunkett 
for Barnwell. Oof. And he is submarine down at the 45-yard line. Malcolm Barnwell, one of the favorite receivers of Jim Plunkett. Raiders deep threat has good speed. Third year out of Virginia Union, picking up 25 yards on the play. Well-thrown ball. One of the things that I think Plunkett does best is throw the ball in between linebackers and defensive backs. You see he runs a play-action pass to get the linebackers isolated so that Barnwell can get deep about 15 yards. He lays it right on the money, and they've got a first. And it's picked oh, off for the first time today. No Kaufman. Intercepting Plunkett. Plunkett has been intercepted three times in this first quarter. All right. And people are going to be very critical of that one, but that was the one ball that wasn't a bad pass. We picked up Kaufman coming off with an interception, but he picked off a short out. He took it on the dead run with 23 yards after he caught it on the board. They've got the ball on the 23-yard line. Uh, Plunkett threw two bad interceptions early, but that looked like a, a, a great defensive play to me. Washington first down at the Raider. 23-yard line. And here's Ricketts. Inside the 20, Mike Davis, the strong safety, stripping the ball, but after the whistle, right, there's El Kaufman. Guy very effective against the run. Well, he is, except what they do is they put Rich Malott generally in a situation where he makes a lot of plays at the line of scrimmage. Kaufman takes these the tight ends out of the back, uh, off the line of scrimmage. He sometimes covers the tight end all over the field. They think he's an outstanding pass cover, and I can see why they think so with the play he just made. And the first quarter has come to a close. A big first quarter for the Washington Redskins. When we resume, they'll be second down and seven at the Los Angeles 20. We'll be right back. After the Colts scored, the Bengals came right back. Anderson bombs away to Collinsworth. This set up one touchdown. They scored another one, and now the Colts are threatening. 17-7 Cincinnati, back to Washington. Marv Albert, John Brody from RFK in Washington. Jim Plunkett is just trying to walk it off, but how to do it without Marcus Allen, who's been sitting it out with that bruised hip. Ripken, second and seven. Out of the 20 as we get underway, second quarter. And John Riggin finding the hole and picking his way for yardage. And Hendricks. They've moved a little Hendricks. better to the right than they have to the left. I think you'll see him move that way in the next, in the next few offensive uh, rushing plays. Generally, you'd expect them to move real well over Jacoby. It seems they seem to be playing it strong over there, but they have had success running to the right. You mentioned uh, Jim Plunkett may be having a problem because Marcus Allen is not in the lineup. I think what it does, more than anything, is it changes the way he tries to attack. And in so doing, sometimes when a fella doesn't get injured until the day of the game and you, you think he's going to play all week, you've got certain plays prepared for the defense you're playing, and I'm sure they included Marcus a great deal. He's not there. You've got to do it on your arm. But I think that's the quality that a quarterback has to have, to be to get things turned against you and come back. And if there's one guy that's had a lot of things going against him over the past 13 or 14 years and come back, it's Jim Plunk. And Marcus said before the game, although he was a question mark, that he would play, and he uh, may yet play. We may see him. First down picked up by the Redskins. At the 13, again, the single back is Riggins, and again, it's Riggins. So the short pickup, Archie Reese and Matt Mellon combined on the stop. Well, it's a tough day. It's going to be, it's going to be a long one for Lyle. If, if the uh, offense for the Raiders doesn't keep the defense off the field some, he's tired. He's playing against a big, strong all-pro in Joe Jacoby. You can see he doesn't know where the ball carrier is because he can't see over the top of Jacoby. Leaves it for the linebackers to pick up, and they do a fine job. But for, for Lyle, he's just trying to find out where everybody is. And Joe Jacoby goes 6'7", 298 pounds, plus part of a huge Washington offensive line. Feisman looking, Enzo! Charlie Brown out of the end zone. 
Ben Watts was playing it short, and he was trying to pick off a short out. Charlie Brown went right behind him. I don't think Theismann realized that uh, the play was going to be done the way Watts elected to do it. Tried to make a fine throw and just a little bit too far. Charlie Brown in his second year, South Carolina State was an eighth round draft pick. Spent his rookie year on injured reserves and last year catapulted to Pro Bowl status. Both Tyson and Plunkett only one for five, but Plunkett has been picked off three times. Redskins continue to alter their formation. Third down and seven. And again, Tyson could not find a receiver. Good coverage by the Raiders. Townsend and Pickell getting to Bison. Well, he's trying to get to somebody late to the outside. If you take more than two and a half or three seconds, you will not have time against the Raider defense. Charlie Sumner has been sitting there in a hole since the time this game started. He inserts the plays. He gives the defensive linebackers, Hendricks and Millen, an opportunity. He changed, they changed the defense as we watch number three, Mark Mosley, try and kick the field goal. 28-yard attempt, and this one is good. So Mosley who missed moments ago, putting this one right through. And the Redskins, who have had their way in this first pass, now lead the Raiders by the score of 10-0. Stadium in Washington, D.C., along with John Brody, this is Marv Albert. Redskins off the 28-yard field goal by Mark Mosley have taken a 10-0 lead on the undefeated Los Angeles Raiders, who come in at 4-0. The kickoff by Hayes. This is Pruitt. Out to the 10, 20, 25. Reggie Evans leading the attack on Greg Pruitt over at the far side, but a flag has been thrown. Ball is being spotted at the 25-yard uh, line. And apparently that flag was waved off. Peter Cronin, one of those linebackers that they keep specifically for special teams, been an outstanding special teams player for them. Looking around, finally, finally finds the ball carrier, and that's where they have him. There's Kenny King out to the 28-yard line as we went from one mass of humanity to another. <laughs> and Marcus Allen sitting it out with that bruised hip. Did not play at all in the second half last week against Denver. He doesn't like it, but he will not play today, I'm sure, or he would already be in there. And I think you'd say, well, does that change what Jim has to do? Behind 10 to nothing changes a little bit, but Kenny King is an outstanding running back, remember. And on the draw, this is Hawkins. And a first down, Frank Hawkins, in his third year out of Nevada, Reno. Stopped by the strong safety, Curtis Jordan. And that's the way to get the ball back into, into control, getting people settled down. The offensive line really hasn't had a chance to hit anybody. Take a look at Plunk. He's thrown the ball on first and second down so much, a draw play is set up. And particularly when he beats the safety blitz. They were coming right after Plunk with a safety blitz, and he got away from the safety man. And now Plunkett to throw. First down. He had the time. Todd Christensen ran down. And an interference call upcoming. I think they got to Todd be before the ball was thrown. I don't know what happened. Or it could be going the other way for all I know. Push off. Oh. And Christensen does not like it. He doesn't like it, but he, he's not, when you're having a problem getting open and he's one-on-one -on -one with Curtis Jordan, who picked the ball off earlier in the game. You can see he ran to him. That's as much Jordan's spot as it is Christensen. He pushes off him, tries to get to an open area, commits a foul. I saw the aftermath of that, so it is called on the tight end, Christensen. Offensive pass interference, number 46. And it's a first down and 20, back at the 27th. Washington Redskins very difficult to run against last week. Held uh, Kurt Warner of Seattle to 34 yards yep. on 15 carries. Well, Joe Bugle on the offense, we just saw him over there. He's trying to keep his group pumped up because 
but you don't keep the Raiders playing the way they've been playing so far in the first quarter and a half all game long. You can see it's getting a little frustrating when the quarterback doesn't throw it right, the receiver drops it. You talk, talk about receivers you can count on. Cliff Branch having a fine year. Runs underneath Vernon Dean in the spot we talked about. He is vulnerable. Plunkett puts it right there. Back to the line of scrimmage. And that is the second catchable ball that Branch has not come up with in this okay. first half. Three and a half gone by. Second quarter. And here is Plunkett looking again and going deep for Branch. That time off the mark. Not way off the mark. <laughs> you can pretty well tell what they want to do. When they get Vernon Dean, who is number 32, one-on-one -on, -one on Cliff Branch, right now that's the situation. This is Branch 21. He takes, takes Dean into the center of the field. At the hash mark, he breaks toward the corner. Has him beat by a step. Plunkett overthrows it by about a foot. But you can bet there'll be more of that to come. And Plunkett is now one for seven. But the key has been intercepted three times, all three, in the first quarter. Third down and 20. Back at the 27. And the calling it a sack. <laughs> what a quick whistle according to the Raiders. But their drive has concluded. Well, Tony McGee, one of the pass rushing specialists for the Redskins, got in there and got a hold of Perkins. Now, they did the same thing with Feisman. Now, you can't sit there and say, well, Plunk is six foot four, 220 pounds. McGee's got a hold of him, but maybe he can get loose. If you're going to call Feisman dead, you have to do the same thing with Plunkett. This all part of the National Football League looking to protect the quarterback and cut down on the injury. We saw Howie Long with that one-arm spin move on Feisman, which received a quick whistle. Ray Guy is back for his first part of the day, back at his five-yard line. He enjoyed the uh, thin air in Denver last week. Not that Ray needs any help. He doesn't enjoy Ray Nels back there. <laughs> All right, here's Nels at the 25. 35. Midfield. It's Guy throwing him down. has not been a friendly first half. And at that point, conduct. Yeah, I, was, I don't think you can pick one of those two out. Flores is one of the few men in control of himself right now, particularly on the Raiders' side of the field. Joe Gibbs has everything going just the way he'd like it. It changes nothing. Well, that's the only call, as uh, announced by Pat Haggerty. But the beauty of that play, the return by Mike Helm, 35-yard return on the punt by, by Ray Guy. And it's a first down at the Raider 44. Weissman asks for quiet. That's Monk in motion. And Washington with the ball. Very short pickup for Joe Washington. Right here, let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. KZBC, TV3, Las Vegas. A packed house, 125th consecutive sellout here in Washington, 55,045. In fact, three of the last five home games, zero no-show total. Marv Albert with John Brody, second and eight for the Redskins at the Raider 42. 
Washington. Again, a very short pickup, Ted Hedrick, right there. You know, you take a look at the Raiders and you say they're intimidating, they're big, and they're strong, but I tell you what they are more than anything is quick, and I think it's epitomized by number 83. You see the way he throws tight ends around? He's got Don Warren there, and he pitches him around like he's a 140-pound pal. And he weighs 240. And Ted is playing his 204th consecutive game. That's the longest consecutive game streak in the NFL right now. Fights in good trouble. Alfredo not able to get the rep. Not too much uh, area for Bison to connect. He was going sideline from the sideline. No, but I do think he's doing the right thing. He'll go back, and in, if he has to run a pattern that's going to take more than three seconds, he's going to go back, and it's predetermined. He gets a block from his tight end to allow him to roll out one way or another, buy a little bit of time, cut the throwing angle down so that he can complete him to the outside. It was incomplete, but it's the, it's the best way to attack. And Jeff Hayes punting for the third time this afternoon. Greg Pruitt back at his 10. Just under 10 minutes left, first half. And the Redskins 10, Raiders nothing. Big rush, and Hayes just did get it off. Redskins look to doubt it and succeed. Ken Coffey, the man who placed it down. So the Raiders hemmed in as they start up deep in their own territory when we come back to what Plunkett will do. Nine and a half remaining in this first half. Plunkett deep in his end zone and firing for Brent. Cliff Brent. He is gone, folks. Wow, 99 yards. That's what Plunkett answers with. And the Raiders right back in it. <laughs> Somebody said, do you think the Raiders are complacent, Marv? All you have to do is look over at the bench. If you notice Tom Flores in your picture, they are up for the ball game. They've seen everything that can happen go against them so far today. They've hung in there about as well as the defense can. They finally get the ball on the one-foot line. Plunk has thrown three interceptions. The receivers have dropped the ball. You, we mentioned that they're going to keep coming toward Branch. This time he caught Dean trying to pick one off. He tried to play He tried to play Branch real tight up the line of scrimmage. Branch got by, Plunkett hit him. This is what Al Davis says is our brand of football, but 99 yards is a bit, is a bit much. As you can see, that's the unemotional Tom Flores. And that is the longest touchdown pass play in the history of the Raider franchise. And there will never be one longer. Good point, John. <laughs> By Chris Barr putting it through. So, it is now the Redskins 10 and the Raiders 7. We'll be right back. At the Raider bench, think he picked up a cramp? Well, he either picked up a cramp or a pulled muscle because, or a pulled hamstring because down about the 15-yard line, you could see him pull up. It looked, you didn't know whether he was just kind of cruising it on in, but it looked at the time as if he had pulled something just a bit. We'll have to wait until the next series to tell. All right, Mike Downs for the Redskins. He slipped. Quick to get back up, but driven back inside the 20-yard line. And the Redskins, well, penalty marker down. Jeff Barnes on the stop of Nelms, but another flag has been thrown. We did the Raider ball game last week. Marvin, I noticed you mentioning there were so few. <laughs> Again, the offsetting penalties as the Peppers continue to flare. Unsportsmanlike and on both sides. Chicago walloping Denver now 21-0. They're being quarter. a bit unsportsmanlike to Denver. Denver's had a little problem offensively. They're going to have to regroup. Minnesota's making a fine comeback. You knew it was about Dallas's turn for something to turn. And Houston is trying to hang in there against Pittsburgh. That's a tough, that's a tough chore. There's a high score in contest. Yeah. All right, first down inside the 20. And Bison throws the bullet. Art Monk with his first reception of the 83 season. So it is broken back. Art Monk, fourth year out of Syracuse, and he's hearing it from the crowd. 
Well, I think what you'll notice right now, more than anything, is how observant and aware the Redskins fans are. They know it's that Art, Art Monk caught the ball. They know how long he's been out, how much it means to him to get back in the lineup. And I'll tell you, this is the dimension he had. He can catch the ball in the crowd inside. You have that big back. A quarterback can see him easier. He can get the ball to him. And if you don't have a fellow 6'3 or 6'4, it really makes it harder to throw that kind of pass inside. And adds that extra dimension. Art can go at running back to be tough on a reverse. Picked up 18 yards on the play. Nice play action. Charlie Brown. So Brown on the screen has picked up the first down of this. Howie Long in yard with Mark May. And again, the flag thrown. Hey, every, everybody in the house is throwing one. The personal foul called on Long of the Raiders. What generally happens is if you don't see the initial foul itself, you don't try and make a judgment on the reaction to it. And that's what's happened here before. This time you saw the initial foul. There's a group back in New England having quite a tussle. Personal foul, number 75, after the play was over. First down. So the audit picked up by the Redskins. Bengals over the Colts, 17-14 in a high-scoring affair in the second quarter. And Green Bay walloping winless Tampa Bay, 35-7. So Green Bay looking to turn it around following the loss to the Giants last Monday. First down at the Raiders, 36-yard line. That's Monk in motion. And Riggins picked up a couple. Archie Reese there on the tackle. You know, we talk so much about the, the loss of quarterbacks, and I, only, I think it's only right you see Tampa Bay, which was a playoff contender the last several years. They don't have Doug Williams. They're 0-5. And when you talk about it, the importance to a team, sometimes it's not the stats. The, that are the indicator of the importance. In this case, Doug Williams was the personality of the Tampa Bay Bucks, and I think they've got to find a new one. Well, they now feel they're going to go with the uh, throw in Samoan. Well, that's fine, but Jack Thompson. That's not the whole answer. Second down and eight. Bison looking for Monk. He's got it. Art Monk for the first down inside the 15. McKinney with the, the tackle that uh, prevented a touchdown. Well, you see Lester Hayes is a little dejected. We mentioned before the start of the game, the only way you're going to get to the Raider defense is get on top and try Lester Hayes. Joe Bugle mentioned before the ball game that, hey, we're not going to let this man intimidate us. And they're taking their best receiver in Monk. Mike Davis cuts Lester Hayes off from the play. That's that motion stuff. Moving people all around, sometimes it gets the defensive people to run into each other. Good offensive structure. 23-yard gain for Monk. First down up the 11. Riggins. John Riggins. Inside the 10, Martin and Hendricks were there. It's been a terrific first half for not, Riggins. Not for those three. <laughs> No, that's Steve Ortmeyer, the, uh, one of the executives with the Raiders now involved with personnel. Charlie Sumner and Tom Flores, they're just hanging in there at this point. Art Mosley getting ready just in case or perhaps for an extra point. Riggin, 64 yards, 17 carries, second down and six. And this is Riggin to the five. Hey, if I'm, if I'm Washington, I want to take a shot at getting in that end zone because three points would be a little disappointing with all the good things we've done in this half to be leading by less than a touchdown would not be satisfactory to me, and I'm sure it's not to Joe Theismann. He'd like to run some kind of a rollout, get one of the tight ends on, a, on some kind of a movement play. We'll see what's called. As a third down and fourth, here's a correction on the uh, earlier score that was posted at a San Francisco in front of New England, 14-6. That's better. <laughs> in the second quarter. Still rooting for your old ball club. You bet. All right, Bozeman. Touchdown. Joe Washington.
This is the first drive that the Raiders have allowed against them all year long. It was a beautiful drive. It was well conceived. They ran, they ran different receivers throughout different areas. Joe Theismann was on the mark. He was very patient. They used Riggins to eat up a lot of the clock, keep him in a situation. And at the end, Theismann makes a perfect throw to Washington. Didn't look like it was perfect, but it's the only place it could have been thrown. And the extra point added by Mark Mosley, so Joe Washington with his first touchdown of the season. 80 yards, six plays in just under four minutes. Richkins, 17, Raiders, seven. Man out of Oklahoma who has made it back from two knee operations. Joe Washington on the receiving end of his first touchdown of the season. And the Redskins now lead the Raiders 17-7. Greg Phillips out to the 15. Good coverage by the Redskins, noted for their special team. They very rarely allow a long gainer. Well, it is not pleasurable to receive the ball if you're trying to beat those fellas. I know that on those special teams. And Sonny Jurgensen mentioned to me earlier in the ball, before the ball game, he said, you know, I don't think anybody really recognizes how dangerous their special teams are. He says they're the most offensive group of special teams players I've ever seen. And he says, Nelm is really a treat. <laughs> offensive in terms of... Uh, offensive in terms of what they're doing is they're really taking it to you. It's uh -huh. not, so there is an intimidating factor there. You got it. First out of the 18. And Frank Hawkins, tackled by a combination of Butts and Grant. Liebenstein, Butts, Grant, Manley up front, Calson, Okawood, Balot, the linebackers, secondary, Green, George, Murphy, and Dean. You see, the Raiders offensively have been a very opportunistic team this year offensively. Now they put themselves in a hole when they're on offense. They've only rushed for 24 yards, and that stat passing 124 is misleading because 99 of it came on one play. There's second down, six. Bardwell for the first down. So Malcolm Bardwell picks it up, followed out by Darrell Green, the left quarterback. Cliff Branch, we're told, pulled a hamstring and is a doubtful. Well, that's person. what it looked like about that 15-yard line, and I doubt if he will be back. You know, Jim Plunkett, even though those two spirals, the three interceptions he did throw, were perfect spirals. It's like some days you're not throwing the ball very well, and you get some interceptions because of it. Today, a couple missed bad decisions, but he is throwing the ball well. And a king. Very short pickup. Well, Calvin, the linebacker on the left, and on the stop. So the Raiders, without Marcus Allen, he has sat it out with that bruised hip, and now with Coach Cliff Branch, after going 99 yards for the longest touchdown in Raider history, has a hamstring and is a doubtful. It's, what it's going to do is just change the way Plunkett plays. He's allowed Marcus Allen and and Branch to run the show, let their and let their defense play. Plunkett knows it's on his shoulders now. And he loves the challenge. Looking for Barnwell. Malcolm Barnwell. Inside the 25. Covered by Darrell Green, but a beautiful over-the-shoulder reception by that guy, number 80. It was a beautiful reception, but the ball was placed in a perfect spot to catch. If you're a receiver, you like that ball coming down. Plunkett has good stuff on the ball. Puts it in a perfect spot. Farm... Barnwell sees it the whole way, takes it easily, and steps out of bounds. 38-yard play, so Plunkett succeeding now with the big play as a first down inside the Washington 25. Hawkins and King, the running back. The short set. Calvin Muhammad, followed up by Vernon Dean. Muhammad in his second season out of Texas Southern, actually drafted back in 1980, first played of the Canadian <laughs> Football League. I was laughing at the fact, Mark. Plunkett, you know, quarterbacks do have funny little thoughts. He's, he's thinking about that short out pattern. He's saying, I don't think I'll throw it over there on Kaufman's side. Let's just see if Malat's as quick as Kaufman. The, the out's open, but the linebacker jumped in the way the last time. All right, a second out and two at the 16. Hawkins. Looks like he picked it up. Dave Butts 
covering him up. I don't know if quarterback said a funny thought. John, well, you, you always have this bizarre way of looking at it. You that. get some thoughts that are so bizarre that you don't want to let anybody <laughs> know you had them. <laughs> Try taking the ball from center with 10 guys at six foot eight. And you don't want to ever let anybody know what you can see. First down for the Raiders. At the 13-yard line, they stay with King and Hawkins. And this is Hawkins. And he lost his balance as he hit the right side. No Kaufman on the tackle. Picked up a yard, second down, nine. Three minutes, ten seconds left, first half. And the Redskins lead it by the score of 17 to 7. Redskins coming at 3 and 1, beating Philadelphia, Kansas City, and Seattle, defeating the Seahawks last week, 27-17. Raiders at 4 and 0, oh, coming off the win over the Broncos in Denver last Sunday. Here's Hawkins. And a fumble. Looks like, let's see. Apparently the Raiders did cover up. Neil Okowitz. On the stop, Hawkins not showing his usual acceleration, well, having trouble getting off the ball. Well, I tell you what, it looks like he's having trouble getting off the ball, but these are draw plays. You know, these last two patterns have been draw plays. It's a kind of a late delayed trap. And uh, yes, it does look like he's getting off late on the ball, but in actuality, he's close to expecting the linebackers to be getting out of there, and they're not doing it. Third down, seven. throws a completion late I guess when he throws an interception the same rule applies we've seen it three times we mentioned Haggerty was very consistent okay this he is he sees that Plunkett is in Manley's grasp calls it dead before he throws it it's okay if you do make the same call all the time and that's one thing Haggerty's done I may not agree with any of the three of them yeah. but at least he's called them consistently well Mark Murphy came up with the ball but it is rolled a sack credited to Dexter Manley Third sack of the day by the Redskins. And Chris Barr will attempt a field goal. But first, a timeout call. The two-minute warning has been provided. And pull the hamstring in running the uh, final yards of that 99-yard pass play, combining with Jim Plunkett. But right now, Chris Barr attempting a 41-yard field goal. Barr is four for seven on the season and not noted for long-range kicking. That time, deflected. Deflected. That thing never did get over the center, Fanny. Uh, it looked like it, it looked like he hit the ball real high, and it just was one of those ugly-looking squirters. He's been kicking pretty darn well this year, but this ball he gets too high, never gets up. It's missed from the time he makes contact. So the score remains: the Redskins 17 and the Raiders 7. The last week, Barr hit from 27 and. 29 against Denver. Got off to the slow start, hitting only two or five. Right. All right, coming up next, San Diego Chargers. Trying to get on track against the New York Giants. Or in some areas, you'll see the Dolphins taking on the New Orleans Saints. So stay with us for a full schedule of football. Tommy Brown has picked up the first down. Run out by Rod Martin. You know, I'm, I'm very impressed watching the way Joe Gibbs and Joe Bugle are attacking the Raider defense. We mentioned earlier that no one has really tried their corner. These fellas are doing that. Now, Gibbs is no stranger to the Raider style of defense. He was down at San Diego as an offensive coordinator for years. They, that's their, that was their real battle of the year. And he's, he's, a, he's attacking them the same way as he did at San Diego. And that's pretty effective. Right? First down at the 38. Bison going sideline. Let's see if they call it complete. Yes, they do. Charlie Brown again. And another Washington first down at the Raider 39-yard line. And it looks like Charlie Brown's hurting.
He'll be back. 23 yard pass play. Charlie Brown. Mark is down and a little concerned. You see, he he has never seen, he's, he's not used to having anybody with more points on the scoreboard than he has. And he's not used to missing games. This is the first National Football League game he hasn't played in. And uh, you can see how it changes the offensive structure for the Raiders. Redskins have just called for time. A minute and 42. Remaining in the first half. And the Redskins leading it by the score of 17 to 7. Well, the Redskins now have one timeout remaining in the half. Taking a look at Dave Butts. Uh, he has done quite a job inside. You wonder why the rushing game will not go very well. They don't even try to run a lot of plays that you'd expect the team to run. They don't run any power plays over butt area. They don't run a lot of things. He's pretty hard to draw against, and it makes it tough to run up. Bison first down at the Raider 39. With time again. Penalty marker down. Virgil C with his first reception of the day. C doing it against Ted Watt, but a flag thrown. Yes, sir. They, they're moving people around so fast you don't know who's who's out on what corner. And a procedure call against the Redskins. Well, they're doing it with motion, and that time they happen to have two of them, I think, in motion at the same time. Could have. Joe Gibbs using much motion, constant changing of the formation. Sure, it kind of kind of nullifies those quarterbacks. Early formation number 66, not on the line of scrimmage. <laughs> it's good to confuse the D's. Sometimes you confuse the O's too, as we see. But taking a rest, and he's had a lot of a lot of chance to rest today. First down and 15, back at the 44. A minute and a half left in this first half. Joe Washington in big trouble. And Washington able to get it off as he was being chased by Townsend and Law. I'll tell you what, that is some kind of quick thinking. <laughs> now that one goes back to the line of scrimmage. And, you know, usually you'd say, well, there's four or five linemen down there, but Rick Walker was an, I don't know if he was an intended receiver, but he was an eligible receiver, and that's all you need. Nobody was down the field. Let's go back and regroup. Well, he got away with it, but uh, very, very dangerous. I am assuming that Joe Washington's peripheral vision is, well, is hey, excellent. It's not too safe when, you, when you're going to lose 30 yards. I don't care what well, they call. I'm going to take the shot at it. Could have been picked off. Well, maybe. I Wide open field. Yeah, you're right. However, second down, 15, and Feisman. That time, dropped by Washington. Feisman on target. Mike Davis covering. Washington Redskins have won 18 of their last 20. That's the best run in the NFL since the Raiders went 21-1 and in 1976 and 77. That shows how well this franchise has been going. And how important this game is to both teams as we see, again, Charlie Sumner, he's trying to find the key. The key is get your offense to hold the ball a little longer. Remember, the Raiders are 13 and two. Our Brown is off to the left now, and Garrett Wright, and Fison looking for Brown. Oh, it's broken up although. Davis was looking to pick it off, and uh, he and McKinney came together. I think Davis thought he would have come up with that football. Right, now take a look. We've been mentioning man-to-man. -man. Notice the, the changes. Everybody's trying to be one-on-one. -on -one. McKinney, number 23, is in the middle of the field. He's trying to help out as a free safety, and Mike Davis needs it. He's the, he's the safety who is in motion, uh, covering Charlie Brown. It's a good thing McKinney got over there. And Jeff Hayes in punt formation. Here's Greg Pruitt awaiting the boot from Hayes. And a fair catch. Oh, he'd like to have that decision over. I don't understand that, John. 
Well, the reason you don't understand it is you've probably never been a returning punt, and neither have I. But when you see that ball up in the air, sometimes you predetermine your thinking, okay? If the ball is somewhere around the 10, I'm not going to take any unnecessary chances. I'm sure he predetermined what he was going to do. There was no one within 15 yards of him. He'd like to have had another shot at it. All right, a 33-yard punt by Hayes. Next Sunday, join Len Berman as NFL 83 will kick off week number six of the National Football League season event. Stay tuned for regional action. New York Jets, Cleveland Browns, Buffalo at Miami, Denver at Houston, New England at Baltimore, Seattle at San Diego. Check your local listing. This is Hawkins. And just at the first down marker, got the foot in, and let's see where they spot it. I think he'll be a little short, but he did get a timeout. They've got a minute left in the half, and uh, it looks as if they're trying to get it into some position to try and get three more on the board, possible six. At least they're not giving up and going to the clubhouse. They're calling a second down and one. Hawkins and Hawkins out to the 35 for the first down and more yes. Mark Murphy the free safety making the stop a 15 yard run by Hawkins and timeout 53 seconds left it took him 12 seconds to move the ball some some 28 yards down the field the draw play has been the most effective ground weapon for the Raiders and that figures because most of the, most of their offense has come on throwing so now they've got 53 seconds to put something on the board. Let's see. Chris Barr was ineffective the first time. He's going to get another shot if they can move it down there some. And as you see, Raiders with the two timeout left. Redskins have one. It was John Riggins who saw quite a bit of uh, action in the first quarter. He had 60 yards on the ground in the first quarter. Riggins with a two-yard run early first to give the Redskins a 7-0 lead set up by the interception by Curtis George. One of three picked off by the Redskins in the first half. And Mosley connected from 28 yards after missing moments before from 36 to make it 10-0. Plunkett and Branch combined for a 99-yard touchdown pass on first and 10 from the one. Cutting us to 10-7, then Bison to Joe Washington, four-yard pass play, and that's where we are. 17-7, Washington. Work it. All down by Tony McGee. He was able to elude Perry Brooks. Tony McGee in his 13th year is an, off, an awfully effective pass rusher. Generally, you'd say, you know, by the time you're a 13-year guy, you might be able to play the run, but to play the pass well, that's a little bit beyond. I can remember Cedric Hardman, Lyle Alzado's now in his 13th year, Tony McGee, some guys get a new, a new lease on life, and then they can't be stopped. Fourth sack of the day for the Redskins, Plunkett again in trouble, overthrowing the tight end, Todd Christensen. And we're down to 18 seconds left in the half. I think that's the biggest problem the Raiders have had offensively. Without Marcus Allen, they have not been able to get to Todd Christensen, who has been their control type receiver throughout the first four ball games and has really been a big part of their offense. The Redskins have nullified him in the first series of plays. Uh, they picked off a ball that was intended for him over the middle. Another one, Plunkett, missed through, and they just haven't been able to connect. Third down, 17. Raiders at their 29. And again, Plunkett takes. And again, all down. It's Max the sack. Tony McGee, his second of the day. Number five for the Redskins. I'll tell you, it doesn't matter what sort of defensive secondary coverage you have. If Tony McGee is rushing the passer the way he has been today, you can play this prevent defense. That's three deep across, four in the 
four in the intermediate zone. They're playing it fine, but it's all predicated on an outstanding pass rush, and that's what they're getting. And we're down to 11 seconds remaining in this first half. Coming up at halftime, a look at what is going on around the National Football League, NFL 83. <laughs> Tom Flores is looking at his game plan, and I know many of the calls that have come today have come from something other than that sheet of paper because I think he intended to have both Cliff Branch available and Marcus Allen. All right, here is Ray Guy back at a seven. Correction, Tony McGee has three sacks on the day. Yep. And Guy just did get it off. This is Nelm. Circular route as the clock runs down. That's the new style of tackling, Rob. We've seen that one about seven times today. Tony Caldwell employed at that time as the half runs out. And the Washington Redskins fans with the roll of approval. The end of the first half, Redskins 17. The second touchdown was an outstanding drive, and it was engineered by Theismann, who is a very fine opportunist as a quarterback. He's come from a 40% thrower to a 65% thrower with good coaching and perseverance. He's now one of the top quarterbacks in the game, and this man has been equal to the task on several occasions previously, but I think this is the toughest situation he's been placed in if they're to win. So he'll have to do it with Kenny King and Frank Hawkins in the backfield. King has been very valuable as the other back with Marcus Allen. But now it's a different situation as we get underway in the second half and the kickoff by Hayes played by Pruitt. Rick Pruitt accelerating across the 20-yard line. So oh, the Raiders with Bruce Davis and Henry Lawrence at the tackles. Charlie Hanna, Mickey Marvin at the guards. Dave Dalby is the center. 18-yard return by Pruitt. You know, you, you look around the league and everybody, every quarterback in the game says, man, I'll tell you, if there was one place I'd like to be, I think the quarterback job for the Oakland Raiders is as close to heaven as you can get. I think some of them would think again if they took a look at the conditions right now. First and 10 at the 22 for Plunkett. And this is King on a slant. Picked up a yard. Mark Murphy, the free safety, was right there. There's Murphy, number 29. He calls the defensive signals, led Washington in tackles yeah. the last four years. I wondered why he was the leading tackler. <laughs> when you're a free safety and you're the man that also calls the signals, if he, if he senses the play coming, senses tendencies, he can throw himself into uh, into coverage that puts him res in responsibility for making the tackle because he makes an awful lot of them. Are you saying a Colgate man would do that? All right, here's King. Quite a stiff on his way. Nothing wrong with it. Don't get me wrong. It's a, it's good defense, and it's a good defensive mind. Uh, he's been playing outstandingly well for the past five years, and he didn't come with a lot of accolades when he got out of college. Third down and five. The ball is spotted at the 27-yard line. Now, the last meeting between the Raiders and Washington back in 1980, Raiders won in overtime, 24-21. You know, there have been eight overtime games already this season. And there are going to be a whole lot more. Record is 13 in the NFL. By Plunkett getting it away. Intended for Kenny King. Do you know Kenny King thought Plunkett was trapped or he'd have caught that ball on the dead run? He may have come up with a with a shoulder problem trying to dive for the ball. You mentioned that the Redskins were having a, you know, that they had played them before. They have never beaten the Raiders. They've played them three times before. Here's Plunkett. Now he finally gets out of a problem. King has seen Plunkett in trouble, thought the ball was dead. Had he, had he continued running, he might have caught the ball on the dead run. You mentioned you expect to see many more overtime games. Any, any particular reason? It is an unusual high number. Well, I think the coaches, you know, most of the control is on the, on the sideline. And I think that a lot of times they'll take the tie in a close game from a three-yard line. 
and, and go for the win when they're playing at home. Uh, late. Go for the time, see if they can win it in overtime. I, and I also think the teams are an awful lot closer now than they were four or five years ago. All right, the punt by Guy, not one of his, his better boots. And the Redskins will take over. So you say it's a combination of balance, a conservative offensive thought, and balance. And uh, one other factor this year, the road teams have done very well thus far. Well, you never know who's on the road. These teams are trading so many people back and forth. You find, you find four or five guys on each team that played with the team that's playing at home. Uh, saw Kenny King shaking up uh, on the sideline, landing on his hand uh, in that last series. Great guy with only a 30-yard punt. Here's Wiggins. Refusing to go down as he reaches out near midfield. Matt Millen on the tackle. John Riggins continues to impress. A little counter play. Take a step to the left. Hope you can get some linebacker movement. He got some. Matt Millen picks him up after about three yards. Those two are a perfect match. And 74 yards on 19 carries for John Riggins. Looking for that 100 mark this afternoon. Picked up six, second down and four. Riggins. And we'll have to see where they spot it. Lyle Alzado. And on the tackle along with uh, Rod Martin. Alzado set out the second half last week in Denver because of a, a bad leg. And uh, Lyle with his first tackle of the second half here, but Riggins picked it up. I do not think you'll be seeing him sitting out this one unless something reoccurs to his knee. He said it wasn't serious, but it, it did bother him. The game was well in hand. You know, I think that when you take a look at Riggins' yard per carry average, it can be very misleading. It forgets to include those second down and twos that he always picks up, third down and ones. He's got about four of those a game, and he's still over four yards in average today. Price went off the face. Don Warren inside the 15. So Warren, the tight end in his fifth season out of San Diego State with his first catch of the day. But I tell you, if there was ever a gimme, he just got one. And that, that ought to be given partly to Riggins. You know, you ought to give about half of that yardage to Riggins if you really care about stats. They finally got the linebackers to concern themselves with Riggins. Warren goes on a slide block, runs right by Otis McKinney, who was trying to stop Riggins. Catches the ball on the dead run from Seisman. And I mean to tell you, he was an awful lot farther open than it looked like in your, in your monitor. 33 yards on the play. First down at the 14. Again, the play action. This is Charlie Brown. And it goes nowhere. Lester Hayes right there. Hey, they're trying Lester today. This isn't the usual uh, jubilant Lester that sits back there and, and intimidates people and, and entices them to try him. These fellas are having to go at his area, and they're doing it effectively. I guess it goes, you know, you talk about some people say hit the weakness, others say hit the strength. I'm saying you can't hardly beat a real good football team unless you can beat their corners. And uh, the Redskins match up very well against the Raiders. Lester Hayes, Ted Watts are the men at the corners. Mike Davis and Van McElroy, the other members of that secondary. Weisman is now 9 for 16, 144 yards. Lost two on that last toss, second and 12 at the 16. Four minutes gone by, third quarter. Redskins lead at 17-7. Joe Washington. Y'all be careful out there. Now you see Art Monk. So Art Monk, who has made his return here today, he is the reigning member of the fun bunch, but not having fun here with the Raiders. An important, an important decision right here. Who's this penalty on? Is it against both of them again? Mike Davis and Monk. It looks like a no penalty. 
<laughs> a tough call to make, and uh, Pat Haggerty has been handling it by calling offsetting penalties, which means often you disregard who starts it, and the only way one club will get penalized is if the other guy steps away, and that's a tough thing to do. Well, I think what's happening right here, Mark, is that you don't call it if you don't see it. And I don't think anybody saw the initial contact. What they see is the reaction. They see two guys going at one another after the play's dead, and they didn't see the start, so they didn't call it. And that's a good decision. All right, third down and nine at the 13. And Bison is hauled out by the flag thrown. Rick Townsend getting to the quarterback, but a penalty marker is down. Face mask, and I... I think they're in discussion. Millen, Millen is livid. He, that play was called from over there by the head linesman. And they said that Townsend grabbed a hold of his face mask, and Greg is not agreeing with it, and it did not look to me like he did either. And look out. Matt Millen just tossed his helmet. He could get an unsportsmanlike conduct unless the official did not see it or chose not to see it. So it is a face mask on the Raiders. Haggerty could have overruled him, but he didn't see it clearly enough to make sure, so he let the rule stand. And it's all, and I guess that's what happened. I, he was a lot closer than I was. So a third down and nine. At the 13. Again, the shifting around and the formation by the Redskins. Feisman has it deflected. And the fans want an interference. Well, the reason they do is because they saw Rod Martin jump all over Joe Washington. But once the ball is touched by a defender, that baby is fair game. Anybody can do whatever they want to get it. And so Mark Mosley. <laughs> Look at Joe. We'll check it. Now, he ought to, what you do is a lot of times you forget the rule. And in the heat of battle, you say, hey, he was all over the top of him. Right. But the ball was deflected. All right, Mosley is missed from 36 and hit from 28. This a 30-yard attempt. And Mosley has extended that Ripskin lead. Five and a half gone by. Third quarter, Ripskin now lead the Raiders by the score of 20 to 7. John Brody from RFK in Washington and the Redskins off the 30-yard field goal by Mark Mosley now lead the Raiders by the score of 20 to 7. Greg Pruitt out to the 10. 20. So Pruitt to the 22. So let's go back to that face mask call against Greg Townsend of the Raiders. Well, let's it, check it out. It looked like it might be a critical call. However, it turned out to be it would have made it just a little bit longer field goal. But you see Townsend has got a hold of his jersey very firmly. Haggerty did not make the call. The call came from over by the head, head linesman area. He didn't see it as clearly as he thought he did. But we have a chance to see it twice. They don't. Yeah, he was screened out, and it appeared from that angle, as if it were. A face mask. 21-yard return on the kickoff by Pruitt. Play action for Plunkett. And he has the tight end, Christensen. Curtis Jordan, strong safety, outside linebacker Rich Mallott on the stop. So Todd Christensen, who has had a quiet game, Plunkett has had difficulty finding him with the reception. He got off the donut. That's the big thing as far as he's concerned. And uh, once the man catches one ball, the ice is broken. Sometimes he can find a few areas. Todd's been pretty well held in check the last couple of games after starting out very fast. Barnwell and Muhammad are the wide receivers. And this is Muhammad for the and first out and more. And he crossed it up. Recovered by the Redskins for the short. It's another. Raider turnover. Well, everything that can go wrong if you're a Raider fan is doing so. Very fine reception by Muhammad. He's trying to break loose. He does. 
Jordan and the rookie, Daryl Green. Makes, he is responsible for the fumble. Curtis Jordan picked that ball up very cleanly for it to be a, a fumble uh, recovery. His second great play of the day. I know he just fell on the ball. It hurt a little bit, but he'll take it any time. 33 yards and then coughed it up, stripped by Green, recovered by Jordan, Washington taking over, and Art Monk with another beautiful reception. James Davis on the tackle. Davis has come over to take the right quarterback slot for Ted Watts, who's out for the day because of a sprained neck. Well, a lot of things happen when people start throwing the ball in your area. Watts and, uh, and Lester Hayes have had it pretty much going their way the first few weeks today they're getting their they're getting their share of the work first down at the 47 as Art Monk made the nice catch Tyson throwing at a crowd intended for Don Warren that's the kind of ball Joe Seisman threw early in his career that you don't see him throw very much anymore Looked like one of those trying to make a great play out of a bad play. Got a good pass rush. As soon as he let that ball go, he knew he'd done the wrong thing. Joe Thijs been out 10 for 19, 162 yards. Had almost a flawless day last week against Seattle. And he's become an outstanding quarterback. There's no doubt about it. And if they don't do something to change defensively, the Raiders, they're putting Art Monk on James Davis. That's a mismatch. All right, Riggins on the carry, stopped by Ken Law. For an update, let's get back to New York to NFL 83. Thank you, Marv. Moments ago in Pittsburgh, Watts clips out from his own 49 on the run. Chased out to the far side, and he throws on the run to Walter Abercrombie, 51 yards. The Steelers regain the lead. Back to Washington. Thank you, Len. Third down and six for the Redskins at midfield. Eight minutes left, third quarter. And Feisman going sideline. Nick Giaquino well covered by Otis McKinney. So the punting unit making its way on. Jeff Hayes back at his 35-yard line. There he is with Greg Pruitt. The man he'll be uh, kicking to. He struggled at times last season. In fact, heard it from the crowd here at RFK, but the Redskins feel that he's a guy who will be around for some time. He punts high, and I think anybody that can kick the ball high uh, can help, particularly with the new rules, because it allows his two outside people to get down under the punt, and you'll notice here, his, his leg goes up in the air, and so does that ball. And a good one. Now throw it. Off the spin, stopped at the 16-yard line. Again, very fine coverage by the Redskins. Ball kicked high enough in the air to let everybody get down underneath it. These special teams for the Redskins are something special. For the Bears doing it to the Broncos, 24-0, third quarter. Minnesota over Dallas, 24-10. Steve Dills having a good day. Houston leading Pittsburgh, 14-7. In the fourth quarter, big surprise there. Seattle over Cleveland, 10-3 in the third. First and 10 back at the 17 as the Raiders take over. Play action for Plunkett. Oh, nice catch by Todd Christensen in front of Mark Murphy, the free safety. So Christensen with the long gainer. And the Raiders have a first down. At the Washington 42-yard line, a 42-yard pass play. Well, everybody in the house knows we have to come to one of our best players, one of our big playmakers in a critical situation. So we've got Todd Christensen getting one-on-one -on -one with Curtis Jordan. Plunkett's going to need a little extra time to get the ball to him. Rolls out to his right, hits him on the dead run, and they've made their first big play in the second half. And when you say we, you talk from the quarterback point of view. This is Frank Hawkins. <laughs> I didn't mean the Oakland oh. Raiders, or the Los Angeles Raiders, I meant, uh, yes. I mean everybody in the house watching the ball game. Okay. Got some letters from the Washington area. <laughs> John. Uh, Hawkins carrying for six, second down and four at the 36-yard uh, line. You know, the funny thing is, as a quarterback, you do catch yourself rooting for both offenses. And I'm sure the defensive analysts uh, 
good the same way on the other side of the ball. But anytime I see a quarterback and receiver do something good, I like it. You're just a diplomatic guy. I guess so. Six and a half left, third quarter. And Plunkett gunning it down. Calvin Muhammad, touchdown! Calvin Muhammad with a spectacular catch. You said that right. Can you believe, Marv, that right now, if they kick the extra point, that the Raiders are within a touchdown and winning this ball game as much as they've been blown off the field? The crowd has come to a total silence. And if you just take a look, you realize who's, where we're playing. Jim Plunkett, a 99-yarder for the one score. Now he moves a little bit this way. Two plays. They come from way down in their own territory. The second fine reception by Calvin Muhammad, his first chance to really do some playing. And I tell you, that, that was beyond the call, that catch. First touchdown of the season. Calvin Muhammad, second year out of Texas Southern. And now Chris Mars puts it through. And the Redskins, although overwhelming the Raiders, completely outplaying the Raiders, can only show a six-point lead. Washington, 20. And the Los Angeles Raiders, 14. And this crowd is stunned. In Washington, D.C., this is Marv Albert along with John Brody. Chris Barr getting set to kick off. Jim Plunkett has done it with a big play. 36 yards to Muhammad, 99 yards to Branch, and the Raiders now trail 20-14. Mike Milne on the return. And the Raider kickoff coverage has been excellent. And again, some words following the tackle. Rick Burns stopping now who is always dangerous. You know, you can do some things at home, Marv, that you can't do on the road. You can control the tempo and the flow of the game a lot. I just noticed the loud speaking system just mentioned that Dallas was behind by 14 in their ball game, and this crowd finally came to life again. Those things mean something. So you're saying get to the public address man well, if just, you're at home. No, I'm, that's okay. It's fair at home. That's what he ought to do. I'm just saying that they know that they've got to do something to lift their group, and they couldn't have come up with a better suggestion. All right, the penalty called on the Redskins. What was that one? <laughs> Before they get to the public address man, they should get to the audio <laughs> on the field. By this, Calvin Muhammad coming up with his first touchdown reception of the season. And Washington, first and ten, back at their nine-yard line. 6.19 left, third quarter. Hayes following Brown across the field. Riggins. And they play him well. A loss on the play. Otis McKinney all over John Riggins. A couple big plays have, have a big effect on a tired defense. You saw the... The Redskins doing just about what they wanted on the drive right, right before they kicked off. Now, here's Al Zato. I'll tell you how much they respect him. They've got both Warren and Jacoby trying to handle him. That's a man that's shown you he can play. When they look at those films, they say, how are we going to keep Al Zato out of the action? I'll tell you, put two of us on him. They did, but you can't cover everybody. Loss of two, second and 12, back at the seven. Gets back to the 10-yard line. A penalty flag thrown over at the far side. This is an important series for the uh, Raider defense. Lyle Alzado in the discussion. And here's the referee, Pat Haggerty. Charlie Sumner. You, you can just feel the intensity level pick up as Willie Brown, who the other fellow in the white shirt, He's the man that handles the defensive secondary. This call was against the Redskins. They're telling him that. We have encroachment on the defense. Also, number 44 went off the field in the opposite direction. He went around the field. He cannot do that at five yards. <laughs> wow, that's, that's a I long. know who 44 is, too. No, you can't do that. John Riggins, I'm sure. Well, he's not. Maybe he's just trying to tell him he doesn't want to come off the field. Anyway. Once you get caught out there, it was probably a late substitution. He tried to sneak off. He got caught. Well, Denver on the board now. Let's Chicago leading at 24-7. In the third, Minnesota in front of Dallas, 
13. So we are back to a second and 12 at the seven. Washington. That's why they give Rod Martin the credentials they do. He's sitting one-on-one -on -one with Joe Washington. They had to pick the right place to throw the ball to the right guy, Joe Washington, one-on-one, -on -one, and number 53 brings him down with a one-on-one -on -one tackle. Now, that's something that not many linebackers can do. And it sets up a third down and five at the 14, a seven-yard pickup. There's Rod Martin, seventh season out of USC. Crowd urging the Redskins on. They lead it 20 to 14. And Feisman airs it up. Broken up by Otis McKinney stepping in front of Charlie Brown, and McKinney nearly picked it off. But a very good series for the Raider defensive unit. Yes, it was. And it, you know, they never changed their style, the Raiders. And we, I was mentioning Willie Brown earlier. He was the first really great defensive back that the Raiders had. He's the one that kind of dictated that, hey, defensively, if you're a Raider, you're going to have to play one-on-one -on -one defense. They've been beaten early in the game. Now they're seeming to rally. They're starting to get closer to the receivers. They're picking up the slack. And here's Jeff Hayes. And he is back in his end zone. Greg Pruitt out of his 45. Short return by Pruitt. Mark Murphy on the tackle, and the Raiders take over at midfield. Four and a half. Remaining third quarter. 37 yard punt. Five yard return. When we return, it'll be the Raiders to the offense. Allegre pulls the Colts within four. Back to Washington. That's an impressive streak for a linebacker. Ted Hedrick, as we mentioned earlier, has the longest such streaks for consecutive games among active players in the NFL. Well, you know, to play 204 games, you know you're going to be there somewhere because it takes you about 15 years to be able to get that close. And this is not just another day at the plant. First down at the 47-yard line of the Redskins. Hawkins and King, the running back. And clock it to throw. First down, looking for Bartwell. Very good recovery by Darrell Green. It looked like Barnwell beat him. Barnwell did beat him, but what he didn't do is when the ball was underthrown a little, he didn't go back through Green to create interference. He tried to let the ball come back to him. Watch Plunkett. He's gonna, he knows, hey, if we're going to win this ball game, we've got to beat them at the corner. But you see, you see Barnwell, he just kind of stays there and waits on the ball. Then Green gets a chance to go at it too. But uh, if he'd come back toward it, he'd have created interference. Second and ten. Hardwell at the bottom of your screen and Muhammad at the top of the timeout called by the Redskins. Free safety Mark Murphy looking to talk things over. Well, he's a little concerned. They've thrown the ball down the field four or five times. Generally, a free safety of Mark's caliber will be able to get in the act a little more than he's been able to lately. And he might feel that he'd like to change some of the defensive thought or find out a little more about what the thinking is. So the timeout called by the Redskins with 4.22 left in the third quarter. Next Saturday, 4 o'clock Eastern time, NBC Sports World returns with a schedule. And Marvin Hagler, as you know, is still the middleweight champion. <laughs> yes. Second down and 10. Jim Plunkett. It was 13 for 24, two touchdowns last week against Denver. This is Frank Hawkins. Hawkins to the 40, met by Rich Mallott. It's Liebenstein, Butt, Grant, and Manley up front for the Redskins. Kaufman, Okowitz, Mallott, the linebackers, Green, Jordan, Murphy, and Dean are in the secondary. Funk is one of the few who is still calling his own plays as a quarterback, and I find that to be an excellent call second down and 10 because they're going to use four downs to make it anyway in all probability he's now got third down and three they very well could run this ball too Kenny King. so king collecting the first down 
Marcus Allen sitting it out for the entire game. He is out with the bruised tip, was called a question mark before the game, but has not played. That's right, and it, it is upon Kenny King to pick up the ground attack, and he's doing so here. But what I like is when you are calling your own plays, as Plunk it is, he can kind of, he knows that on fourth down we're going to be having a go at it. I've got three downs to pick up the first. Marcus is rooting. He's talking to Art Shell, the great offensive tackle who's now a, line, a lineman coach for the Raiders. And they're getting enthused again. They've been blown out of the park. Now they've got a chance to get back. First down of the 37. And Plunkett fires for Caldwell. And again, the recovery by Green to knock it away. That's great. That's great play. And he's a fella. He's a rookie. How many rookies have you seen? A lot of them who just defy you to beat them. He's a defensive quarterback. All those fellas think they're faster than everybody, better than everybody, tougher than everybody, stronger than everybody, more valuable. He's one of the few guys that backs it up. Sonny Jurgensen asked him, he said, how fast do you run? He said, I don't know, 4-1, four 4-2. One, <laughs> four but you know, he says, you're talking about a different class of speed. He says, nobody can beat me. He was world class in college at Texas a and I. Second down and 10. Calvin Muhammad for the first down. Vernon Dean on the tackle, and what a second half it's been for Muhammad. Well, what are we saying? Earlier in the ball game, we said, okay, Vernon Dean made the Pro Bowl last year in all pro because he played the outside real tough. Most quarterbacks like to throw the ball to the outside. He led you astray. He led you believe he was taking away the inside, but in effect, he was really moving to the outside. You can beat him on the inside. People have done it this year, and Plunkett's doing it now. 16-yard gain. Now Greg Pruitt in the backfield alongside Frank Hawkins, but Plunkett to throw again, looking for Pruitt. And Pruitt covered by the middle linebacker, Neil Okowitz. Neil Okowitz moves around real well in that middle. We haven't heard a lot of them today because they haven't tried to run the ball in the middle uh, on, the, on the Redskins. We mentioned Butt and Grant make it very tough for anybody to move the ball in that area. And they keep people off of Okowitz. That time he was one-on-one -on -one with Greg Pruitt, did his job all the way down the field. So Remember, they, we still got a quarter plus the 205. The big number of that stat line alongside the name Jim Plunkett, three interceptions. All in the first quarter. Second and ten. Looking for Muhammad. Touchdown! Calvert Muhammad again. And the Raiders have tied it at 20. If you don't mind my saying, this is the sort of play in a big game that just changes the starting lineup. I don't care who it is he's going to be playing in front of. He's going to have to be doing an awful lot of playing. The Raiders like to go deep. They've got a man named Calvin Mohammed that can do it for you. He is a, in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Take a look. He's a crisscrossing pattern man. The two defenders run into each other all over the field. It's Coffee trying to handle Mohammed. He can't do it when the ball is thrown. Mohammed makes another great catch. His second reception of the day for a touchdown, and the Raiders can go ahead with this. Mark Wilson puts it down for Chris Barr, and the Raiders have moved in front. So the Raiders have come from behind, although completely outplayed throughout the first half, and they now lead the Redskins 21 to 20. A 22-yard touchdown pass play with that man, number 82, Calvin Muhammad who is seeing action because of the hamstring injury suffered by Cliff Frank. Now here's the crowd looking to rev up the rescue. I'll tell you what I'm looking at. I'm looking at Calvin Muhammad. Now he's on the special teams, the kickoff team, after catching a touchdown pass. I think they're going to have to use a lot of him for the rest of the day. I might try to get him over on the sideline. One more look at this touchdown. It's, it's another individual great effort. Plunkett has taken it upon himself to get this game back in the hat he's done so with real stand-up tough play he's taken a group that really is without their two big stars and put them right back in the in the second half have a kickoff by far mike melds off the good kick <laughs> so 
but returned by Nelms <laughs> out near the 30, and guess who on the tackle? Calvin Muhammad. That's incredible. They, you know, I was talking to their special teams coach. They, they were sitting discussing how good a player he is on special teams that, you know, we'd like to use him. We don't think we're going to lose. Drop a lot when he's in there. Drop a lot. He's made three outstanding receptions, fumbled the first one, and then has made two great receptions. This man, they know, will do it if you give him enough chances. Mike Nels from Canada, picked up as a free agent. Been in the Pro Bowl several years now. They've got to do something more than that. 32-yard return by Nels. Good rush by Alfredo, but a beautiful reception. Charlie Brown for the first down and much more. <laughs> James Davis wrestled him out. Bison looking in the face of Alvedo. That's okay. And we're taking a look at, at just a fine, a fine uh, kickoff return, but this is a play that deserves the, the merit. Seisman stood there, threw it off his back foot. It's all the time he had. Hit Brown on the dead run. We mentioned he's going to have to do something a little more exciting than the kickoff return team, but uh, he did it quick. Our 34-yard pass play. Brown's fifth catch of the day. First down at the Raider, 37. Minute and a half left in what has been a terrific third quarter. Riggins fumbled. recovery so that is the first fumble loss by the Washington Redskins since the New Orleans game last year and uh, 600 and change in terms of the streak which we'll be able to focus in on on a moment but uh, John Riggins finally losing a fumble and you see you, you, you just have a game between a bunch of money men the young fella that's been playing so well all year long Greg Townsend Strips the ball from Riggins. Everybody knows you're trying to hold on tight, but these fellas are trying just as hard to knock it loose. Townsend does. The Raiders have the ball. That's just a great defensive play. Raiders first down at their 35. Hawkins picked up two and was thrown back by Okowitz. Neil Okowitz, small, not fast, but always hustled. And a leader sets the tone for the Washington defense in his fifth season out of Maryland. He's, you know, I, it's, what do we do whenever the ball game's tight? We go back to the first quarter to discuss a missed field goal somewhere. I'm sure that Mosley may be thinking of it, but he shouldn't be because the ball game changes with every score. The, the strategy changes, and one missed field goal early never, never dictates the outcome of a ball game. Second down and eight. Down to 40 seconds to go, third quarter. Plunkett after standing in, right near the first down marker. He's got his feet over, but I don't know if the ball made it. Rich Ballard on the cover-up tackle. It did, where they marked it, that ball is good for a first down. Jim Plunkett knows he's going to need more, more points today, and he's the man that's going to get them for them if they're going to. He gets, he gets out of the rush, and they are rushing him pretty well. His offensive line has done an adequate job, but he's had a lot of times when he had to scramble. He picks up the first down, keeps the drive alive. And the indication that the Raiders have picked it up. Los Angeles Raiders at 4-0. They beat the Broncos in Denver last week, a methodical 22-7 win, preceded by victories over Miami, Houston, and Cincinnati. Raiders had allowed only 37 points in three games coming into today, but the Redskins were able to uh, wash away the uh, superb defensive play of the Raiders in the first half as they got right on the scoreboard, and now the Raiders have been able to regroup and have gotten right back in it. Time is running down in the third quarter, and uh, that is the end of the third quarter. With the score, the L.A. Raiders 21, Washington Redskins 20 will be back after these messages from your local station. Brought to you by Jeep Cherokee and Jeep Wagoneer. When it comes to four-wheel drive, one word says it all. Jeep by AT&T Information Systems. And by a tool for modern times, the IBM Personal Computer. 
First down at the 46-yard line for Jim Plunkett. Intended for Malcolm Barnwell as we get underway in the fourth quarter. And that is the streak that was ended by the fumble by John Riggins. 685 consecutive offensive plays. Incredible strength. He's a very strong individual, and to get the ball away from him, you have to surprise him, and that's what Townsend did when he when he created the fumble. And, and you know, some guys, when they fumble, don't recover their own. John Riggins has fumbled a few times, but he's always so so quick to get on anything that happens that he's always come up with it. So uh, this is, that was a rare one. Second down, 10. Hawkins. Frank Hawkins ripping off the first down into Washington territory at the 40-yard line. This telecast presented by authority of the National Football League, and it is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Washington Redskins and the National Football League is prohibited. Hawkins with a 16-yard pickup, and he's had a good second half. 64 yards now, 12 carries for Frank Hawkins. Receiver was Barnwell dragged down. It was covered by Green. Okay, I guess you have to take what they call, but you know they say incidental contact is no foul, right? I cannot see where Daryl Green was doing anything other than trying to get a hand on the ball, and I don't know whether he went through Malcolm Barnwell or not, but that looked like incidental contact to me, and I'm sure the people at home feel the same way. But on the interference call, it's a first down for the Raiders. Marv, how long has it been since we've seen a game where both sides are trying to throw outside to their cornerback? It's because not too many teams play your man-to-man -man defense all over the field. And Hawkins in trouble gets it off to King. Nice move by King after the reception. Kenny King in his fifth season. Out of Oklahoma, he made the Pro Bowl back in 1981, but the addition of Marcus Allen to the uh, Raider roster made for a move to the fullback slot. He made the Pro Bowl coming from a team. He came from Houston originally, where he was a third draft choice, and he hadn't really been given a chance to play. Went to the Raiders. They've used him extensively since, and he's been a fine back there. Second down and one. Hawkins looking for the first down. Rich Mallott among several Washington defenders, and it is a first down picked up by Hawkins. Raiders first down just inside the 15-yard line. They come from behind to lead the Redskins by one. There's a final Pittsburgh coming from behind, and they knock off Houston. Well, it just keeps getting worse if you're an Oiler. Houston Oilers now 0-5. Hawkins peeling off. This is Pruitt throwing. So Greg Pruitt on the option Try to hit the tight end, Todd Christensen, Jordan, and Murphy on the coverage. Good, good alert defensive secondary play. Now, not too many people generally expect Greg Pruitt to make a kind of throw like this as we see Todd Christensen going down the field. Curtis Jordan is all over Christensen. The other two defensive secondary people are all over him also. Kaufman making the 455 on Pruitt, but you can see that ball was not going to be completed. Two and a half minutes gone by. We're fourth quarter. Sellout crowd in Washington. And the Raiders second and 10 at the 15. Watch it, Trillin. Christmas inside the five for the first down. Curtis Jordan on the stop. You just can't say too much about Jim Plunkett. He's hung in there when, in the in the throes of adversity and now he seems to have turned this thing around on his arm their defense has, has hung in there and now he's right down on the two yard line threatening to go up by more than a touchdown and i mean it's not an easy thing away from home 
to play that way when your two stars are out of the ball game. He has been the sort of fellow that let let George do it all year long, and now he's doing it himself. 12-yard pass play, first and goal at the two. Through it in motion. And it's a touchdown for the Raiders. Todd Christensen with the score. He was hit out of the end zone, but the Raiders on the board again. And they lead it 27 to 20. Marv, we're about to see a lot more football. You can bet that Joe Theismann will be throwing that ball from corner to corner as soon as they get it back. But it's the comeback of Jim Plunkett and the Raider offense that really sticks in your mind now. And Chris Barr adds to the lead. So Christensen with his fourth catch of the day, 61 yards in all, his first touchdown to give the Raiders a 28-20 lead, 11 minutes, 50 seconds left, fourth quarter. Still a tough game to figure out, all the turnovers committed by the Raiders. And I just think you're going to see them all right now. Nine plays, 65 yards, four and a half minutes for the drive to lead to the touchdown. Elms not able to get to it. And uh, they'll kick it again. So both clubs are moving back upfield. Recapping the scoring, it was Riggins' two-yard run. Early first quarter off the interception by the strong safety, Curtis Jordan. Mosley missed the field goal from 36 yards, then hit from 28 to make it 10-0. Plunkett to branch for 99 yards. Turns out to be the longest touchdown pass in the NFL in 15 years. You'd have to go back to 1968 when Sonny Jurgensen hooked up with Jerry Allen. <laughs> He's hooked up with a lot of players, but I, I, I think uh, Jerry Allen was the least known. Boy, they had some studs. When you talk about Bobby Mitchell and Charlie Taylor, who's now a coach, and Jerry Smith, they had the great ones. And then it was Spiceman of Joe Washington making it 17-7 for the Skins. Mostly a 30-yard field goal extended it to 20-7. And then the Jim Plunkett, Calvin Muhammad show. 36 yards to cut us to 20-14. And then a 22-yard touchdown pass play for a 21-20 Raider lead. And a moment ago, Plunkett and the tight end, Todd Christensen, to give the L.A. Raiders a 28-20 lead. There have been a lot of penalties too, Marv, but at least they've evened out. All right, Reggie Evans, an up man. Off the spin, but stopped inside the 20 yard line. Evans, a first year player out of Richmond, who spent all of last year on injured reserve. Stopped by Jeff Barnes. All right, here's Barnes, 56. This linebacker has been with his club for the past four or five years, and he's, he's played pretty good defense, but he plays excellent special teams. He comes down there, gets right through the wedge, and stops the ball, the ball here before he gets to the 20-yard line with a five-yard penalty. That's a, that's a superb play. Seven-yard return by Evans. First down at the 18. Play action for Feisman. Lawson. Charlie Brown to the 34-yard line. You know, it's one thing if you're sitting at home and you say, hey, they know they're going to throw it to the wide receivers. Why don't they do something defensively? Well, as long as you play man-to-man -man defense, and that's the personality and the trademark of the Raiders, they're not going to change that. It's up to James Davis to do something about it as a cornerback. They're going to leave him one-on-one -on -one all day long. 16-yard pass play, first down, out of the 35-yard line. That's Brown in motion. Short setup, Brown again. Brown to the 42-yard line. It isn't much of a secret. It's how do you stop them? Well, they spot it at the 43. It'll be second at about one. The other side of the field, Lester Hayes. He's sitting there with Art Monk. 
They're having another one-on-one -on -one battle. You can see, if you have your druthers, you don't generally pick on Lester Hayes. Sometimes you must. But if you, if you have a rookie, pick on him. John Riggin. He slips. And close to the marker, Ted Hendricks covering him up. Charlie Brown has an unusual sliding running style. Very tough for cornerbacks to judge his speed. Yeah. And he has been a big play man for the Redskins. Riggins now 81 yards, 23 carries. Got off quickly in the first half. Well, they're not in a position right now where they're going to... Uh, I'm not saying they won't use a lot of Riggins, but they won't feature him. They have to get a touchdown and a field goal at least in order to win the ball game. And with nine minutes to go, you don't have time to drive down the football field at your own leisure. And as you saw, just short of a first down. Nine and a half left, fourth quarter. Rickett, first down and more. Ted Hedrick on the tackle. You take a look at the Hogs. They can move people out in short yardage situations. John Riggins is not contacted until he moves four or five yards down the field and then by Ted Hendricks. And John picked up six. Jacoby Grim, Bostick, May, and Stark up front. That's Monk in motion. Riggins. And Rod Martin able to stack him up. Atlanta leading Philadelphia in the fourth quarter, 24-21. Wow, Green Bay over Tampa Bay, 55 to 14. They'd like to break those up into about three 20-point games, I think. They were held in check by the Giants on Monday. 91 yards, 26 carries for Riggin. Second down, six. Lester Hayes had a shot, and that was thrown way off the mark. The intended receiver, I presume, was Art Monk. Well, it looked like it was thrown off the off the mark, uh, Marv. But if you take a look at Art Monk, when that ball was thrown and he made his turn, he, he looked back into the quarterback's area and didn't see that Heisman, Heisman had already thrown it, or and and Heisman intended for him to keep going across the field. Now Joe's got another one-on-one -on -one situation. Hangs in there. Now, you see, Art kind of pulled up, and now he wonders, uh-oh, maybe I did the wrong thing. But he couldn't locate the ball. Monk to the left, and Garrett right for this third down and six. Penalty flag throw. Now, Monk on the reception. And a first down, if it stands up, out near the 25-yard line, James Davis hauling Monk down. But let's see what the call is all about. Most frustrating thing in the world for a quarterback and an offensive team that need, knows it has to get on that scoreboard to get called for offensive holding after you've made a big play on a third down situation. And here's Pat Haggerty as he brings holding it back. Number 53, offense. It's the center, Jeff Bostick. Four-year man out of Clemson called for the hold. And it's now a third down and 16 back at the 43. Virgil C. top of your picture. And Alvin Garrett on the other side. Alcedo and Thompson Chase. And up. Let's see, did the linebacker come up with it? Mike Davis broke it up. No, it is incomplete. I saw the official rule very quickly, so he saw the play the whole way. Rod Martin might have a few things to say, 
made a good try, but Jim Poole, the official, was in a perfect place to make the call. Seisman coming out of the pocket, trying to buy a little time. Greg Thompson is right on his heels, though. And this is Jeff Hayes getting set to punt for the seventh time. Greg Crook back at his 16-yard line. Jim Plunkett and Calvin Muhammad hooking up for two touchdowns. And that's been the story in the second half. Crook unleashing. That's the punter Hayes missing. And here's Crook who could go left all the way. Greg Crook doing something that is rarely done against the Redskins special team, and that is he has scored a touchdown. He made a decision, Marv, that I think most coaches would scold. Late in the ball game with an eight-point lead, he elected to catch the ball on the four-yard line and try to run it out of there. How many times have you heard anything inside the pen, let it go in the end zone? He saw enough territory to give himself a little free running room, elected to catch the ball, and boy, when he made that break right in there, he made a break against the best special team to play in the game. He gets around Jeff Hayes, and from there on in, it's nothing but a cakewalk. Talk about a drastic turnaround. It is being recorded as a 97-yard punt return. And the Raiders have broken it open. Chris Farr looking to make it 35 to 10. And done. And again, silence from 55,000 here at RFK. The Los Angeles Raiders leading the Washington Redskins by 15. Just 15 minutes ago, we're held for the flag is down. Wide open football. Yeah, it's holding though against the Redskins. That puts them right back in a hole. They're complaining, but uh, Haggerty made the call very early. Seven minutes, 17 seconds. Remaining fourth quarter. The Redskins in need of a big play, trailing 35 to 20. And people have stated so long how good Mike Nelms is at making the big play. He's made two of them today. Holding Both of them number 30 on the run back. have been called back. Nick Giaquinto called for the hole. All right, you see, they're trying to get some sort of a, a little crack at the point of attack. They get a good enough block, but most of it's on now. He just gets them separated, picks up a little bit of running room. And Barr makes a pretty good play to keep it from being larger. Charlie Brown to the right, first down, first and 10 at the 12-yard line. And that's Garrett moving to the left. Bison looking Garrett's way, now goes the other. Joe Washington. Washington to the 30. Washington unleashing. Hayes pushed it out, and here are the Redskins first down at the 21. You don't make that kind of play unless your offense thinks you have a chance to win the ball game. He got great blocks from his wide receivers, two of them that time. Seisman looks to the other side, waits for the last possible second, comes off. Good coordination with Bostick and May. They pick up their blocks at the point of attack, and here goes Joe getting good help from Charlie Brown, number 87. When, you're, when your wide receivers still think you have a chance, they're going to help your running back. You get plays like this, and you can get yourself back in it. Joe Washington going 67 yards before that man, Lester Hayes, pushed him out. And his eighth season out of Oklahoma, two years with San Diego, three with Baltimore, and now a Redskins. First down at the 21 of the Raiders. Play action. Feisman off the roll and batted down. Otis McKinney got a piece of it. Check of the scoreboard. Baltimore over Cincinnati. 
34-31. That's the final score. Baltimore three and two. And Dallas leading Minnesota in the fourth, 34-24. Boy, we were away a while, and they just, sounds like Minnesota went away too. Just under seven minutes left, fourth quarter here. Marv Albert with John Brody. And what has turned into a big play duel between the Redskins and the Raiders. The tight end, John Warren. Close to the first down, McKinney on the tackle. Coming up next, San Diego Chargers. And the Giants or in some areas, the Miami Dolphins and the New Orleans Saints from the Superdome in New Orleans. So stay right here for a full day of football here on NBC. Taking a look at Joe Bugle, the offensive coordinator on the right-hand side of your screen. He was the same at Houston when they were playing real good football, and he had Earl Campbell his first three years. So you can see the type of attack he employs, and it's very effective. And the Redskins have picked up the first down. Clock running six and a half left fourth quarter. Raiders with a second half serve. Leading at 35 to 20. First down at the 11. That's Gia Quinto in motion. Touchdown! So Bison right back combining with Charlie Brown, who did it in the face of James Davis. An 11-yard pass play, and now... We see discussion. Steve Hortmeyer sitting there discussing whether or not uh, we run it back out of the end zone and uh, letting everybody know that this ball game is far from over. If it only takes you a minute to get the ball from your own 20-yard line all the way into the opponent's end zone, you've got six of those left. We've got some ball game left. And Mark Mosley putting it through, following Charlie Brown, fourth touchdown of the season. There's the second-year man from South Carolina State. We have six minutes, 15 seconds left, fourth quarter. Raiders 35, Richards 27. Drive, four plays. 88 yards, concluding with the 11-yard pass from Feisman of Brown, and it's a 35-27 Raider lead with 6.15 left, fourth quarter. Onside kick team, and they have Rick Truitt up as a short man. And it looks to me like the Redskins got it. Yes, they did. Truitt tried to chase it down, could not get near it. And Greg Williams not looking to give up that football, but he came up with they're going to let him keep this one because an excellent onside kick by Jeff Hayes. He, he backed the ball as hard as he can right at the front man. When it hit him, it caroomed into no area at all. And Calvin Sweeney could not come up with the ball. Number 47, second-year man. Greg Williams comes up with it. The Redskins have it in greater territory, first and 10 on the 32. And the crowd quiets the Bison. That's Monk in motion. The plays I'm watching are so well designed. They need a little time. When they do, they get they get two tight ends to block down, let Joe roll out one way, use the other tight end against the flow as they did Warren on that occasion. They've done it three or four times. They're doing it. They're doing about all you can do offensively on both sides of the field. 24-yard gain. Warren with four catches, 84 yards. First down at the 13. Up. 
Otis McKinney. On the coverage of Don War, that's McKinney in a sixth season out of Colorado. And as you see, you saw the, the face of McKinney. You saw he's a little tired. And when you play defense, as long as these guys have had to play it in the last 10 minutes, you get a little tired. And offensively, you get a little enthused. And it makes it an awful lot easier to operate. It's been a roller coaster ball game. Redskins with the early lead. There's McKinney. He's puffing. You try to cover somebody one-on-one -on -one all over the field, you know the importance of letting somebody get by you. That adds to the fatigue. Raiders coming back second half. Now the Redskins on the move. Big look. And Franklin pulled down by Long. Howie Long with a significant sack with five minutes, eight seconds left, fourth quarter. And from the outside on the right, and this is one thing that I'm sure Joe would like to have another attempt to try and uh, try and handle because he knows you can't get caught at this time in the ball game. Time is, is one thing. If, if they're under five minutes on the clock, the field position is everything. That's the fourth sack for the Raiders. The Washington offensive line had not allowed a sack the previous two games. Third down and 28. Back at the 31. Washington. Washington on the pickup, but uh, way short. Well, we've got a fourth down play. You say, okay, it's the coach's turn. Do you want to try and get something now, knowing your team needs another possession and a touchdown? That's what Joe Gibbs is going to do. So Mark Mosley checking in. He's two for three. He missed from 36 late in the first quarter and then connected from 28 yards. And from 30, this is not the time to try a fake field goal. The Raiders will not try and block this field goal. 34-yard attempt. And it is good. Four minutes, 28 seconds remaining. Fourth quarter, Raiders 35, Redskins 30. Hayes does here. He went for the onside approach last time, recovered by Washington. I think they'll kick it down the field. I, I think he can get it back once. It was twice you couldn't get possession of, and uh, maybe he'll go. I doubt it. Oh, you pulled back right the first time, and this is Clay Montgomery. Raiders were looking for it. Again, they had threw it up as the short man. But a penalty flag is down. I think it's a sound play. Now, generally, the, the penalties are on the off, are on the receiving team, which would put the Raiders in a very big hole. And this could be a critical penalty. And it is called against the Raiders. Jim Plunkett, the man who led the Raiders back, Raiders now lead it, 35 to 30. Four minutes and 18 seconds. Remaining fourth quarter. Okay, if you, let's put it in your shoes. If you're sitting there where Plunkett is, do you try to get out of this hole right now, knowing that Washington's got everything going for him? Or do you say, okay, let's try and control the ball on the ground? I go to the ground first. All right, let's see what he does. Bucket and Calvin Mohammed looking at the Raiders from behind. And let's see what he does here. First and ten at the 16. And the swarming defense of the Redskins all over. Frank Hawkins. Darrell Grant leading the charge. The Redskins defensive unit all revved up. Liebenstein, Buck, Grant, Manley, up front, Calvin, Volkowitz, Malak, the linebackers, Green and Dean at the corners, Jordan and Murphy are the safety man. Second down at about eight, he picked up two. Still playing man-to-man -man defense secondarily on the corners. And again to the ground. And again, the 
Hawkins holds. Hawkins stopped by Murphy. Turned out to be an excellent defensive call. A safety blitz. They've tried it on second and ten three or four times. That's the first time it's really worked out for them. There must be a tendency where Oakland second and ten runs the ball an awful lot or throws the ball to the outside. And that's why you can't safety blitz in that situation. And it's a loss of three. Four down, 11. get up and run. I believe he was ruled down. Ken Coffey covering. This is what this is what Todd thought he'd done. He thought he caught it and got off of this ground fast enough before he was touched. It was not ruled that way. They are short of the first down and they'll have to punt. So the Redskins with a superb series defensively to hold the Raiders. Here you go. You've got the best punt returner in the game. You've got the best punter that played the game in the last 50 years, maybe ever, and it couldn't be more critical. Ray Guy back at his 10. Three-time pro bowler Mike Nelms at his 32-yard line. And now the two-minute warning. So the timeout here at RFK. And when we return, it'll be Guy punching to Nell. But right now, another one of those fantastic finishes with John Brody. RFK Stadium in Washington. And the Raiders leading the Redskins 35 to 30. Ray Guy getting set to punt to Mike Helms with two minutes left, fourth quarter. And Marv, you know, I've heard I've heard crowds like this, but it's been in 120 and 30,000 seat stadiums. When they stand up, sounds like this. But this place, you can hardly hear yourself think. And this is now with terrific coverage by McKinney. Otis McKinney was right there. A 46-yard punt by Guy. But very little advance. There's the final. Chicago walloping Denver 31-14. Dallas doing it again. Pittsburgh back on top. They're now 3-2 and two in their division. Seattle handed it to Cleveland. Brian Seitz probably had his first bad one. And look at the Niners. San Francisco beating New England. All right, Feisman going sideline. And we'll have to wait and see where they spot it. Charlie Brown on the reception again. And for Brown, his ninth catch of the day. It is just short of the first down. A minute and 27 remaining fourth quarter. Raiders lead it 35 to 30. been called that so gives them one right Redskins down to one Raiders have three when we resume it'll be Washington operating from the Los Angeles 34 yard line first down at the 34 with a minute eight remaining and we're seeing today what happens when two offensive teams challenge defensive secondary do not give the cornerback credit for being able to cover have good execution, good structure, and say, fellas, catch me if you can, but I don't think you can. And that's the way it works for both sides. And we'd like to take the opportunity to thank some of the people who have made this uh, telecast possible. The executive producer of NBC Sports, Michael Weissman, coordinating producer of football, Ted Nathanson. The telecast of today's game produced 
by Peter Rolfe, directed by John Gonzalez, technical director Jim Marshall, associate director Mike Heilbaum. First down play for Baseman. He has thrown! Cody Brown at the six, brought down by Kenny Hill, and the clock is running. We're down to 50 seconds remaining. Baseman. He doesn't want to take a timeout. He's called another play in the huddle. He can catch the defense napping. He's going to force the Raiders to call timeout. Good play. He was trying, as you say, to catch uh, the defense. Not only not ready, but also upset about that last play. Well, no. What he'd like to do is he wants to get the time, but he doesn't want to call his last time. So he gets on the ball quickly. He has his offense line up. It forces the Raiders, who are not ready to play right yet, to call one of their own. That's just heads-up football. 29-yard pass play. Charlie Brown again. Charlie Brown has had a magnificent day. 11 receptions, 181 yards. 43 seconds left. And the Redskins will have first and goal at the six-yard line. Coming up next the Giants and the Chargers, or in some areas, the Dolphins and the Saints. So stay right here on NBC for the second part of our NFL doubleheader. The Washington Redskins at one point led 20 to 7. Raiders came from behind. At one point, they led 35 to 20. And that was with seven and a half minutes left. First and goal at the six as Brown goes to the left. Bison. Looking Enzo. Overthrows Brown. He saw he was covered. That's right. James Davis. And Kenny Hill all over Charlie Brown. Okay, the other side. We've got Lester Hayes. One-on-one. -on -one. Monk's in motion to get Lester Hayes right off the top of him. That is a legal play. Monk was not alert enough to take a look at Hayes. That ball was not going in his direction anyway. He was trying to check out where it was thrown. Better not do that. Beisman is 22 for 38. 411 yards. Second and goal at the sixth. Looking Washington. Washington, Washington's first touchdowns of the season. Redskins with a 37-35 lead. And here is Jeff Hayes. Red 
seconds, and the Redskins just have to sit on the football. Seventh turnover by the Raiders that killed them in the first half, and now Dean picks it off from Plunkett. You can see, if there's a prayer, let's throw it down to number 82, see if he can come up with it. This game is history. It's one of the best offensively played games I've ever seen. Penalty marker was thrown as Weisman just sat on the football. Washington Redskins on their way to their first ever victory over the Raider franchise. They had lost the previous three. A procedure penalty on the Raiders. More football to come following the Redskins and the Raiders. You'll see either Miami and New Orleans or the Giants and the Chargers right here on NBC. And now the clock running out. We'd like to thank our statistician Joe Ban, our spotters Gabe Romano and Vince Scanlon. That's Joe Gibbs congratulating the Raider players, Marv Albert with John Brody from Washington again before.